class to my first really long subathon. Uh, I have my friends will entertain you wise. Actually, set up timer. <laughs> oh yeah, the Zin, uh, Zinyan and Zinyan, Zinyan and I, I are like are the darkest characters. Oh, well, let's let's drop that for now. Okay. Yeah. Right. right, we are seven minutes late, and you weren't entirely ready when you started. No, I just had to hit the button. Uh oh. Yeah. Damn. Yeah, it started right now. I can see the timer. Are you but sure? Also, it I gotta started? send. I also gotta send a tweet. So hold on. Oh no, my sub wore off. Now I'm seeing ads again. Ha! <laughs> Get fucked. Where's Bookworm when you need him? Is it illegal to tell an asexual to go fuck themselves? That is, no, that is literally not a law. What kind of question was that? None. What did you just say? I said none. What do nuns have to do with this? N-O-N-E, she said on a bitch. <laughs> yes, I say none weird. Fuck you. Fucking <laughs> Virginian. It's not me, Virginia. It's that there's literally some words I couldn't sp uh, uh, say because uh, I did not get good speech therapy for a while. Yeah. What's an SCP if you could get rid of it, you would? Uh, SCP-231. Is that again? The wives of the Scarlet King. Oh yeah. Oh. <laughs> I didn't even have to hesitate. Oh boy. I'm pretty sure actually you could recreate uh SCP two three one if you just in uh Scribble knots. If you just made like a pregnant lady, and you just made it Jesus, to holy Fire fuck! Fire red emblem has gifted five what? subs to viewers. Uh, th thanks, bookworm. <laughs> what Thank you. Do? Oh, okay. Can we bookworm do a mass we gift? Estimate how rich bookworm is. Bookworm mass gifted subbed a bunch of people. <laughs> And now I have to do another whole hour of <laughs> streaming. <laughs> oh. Right, that's true, Bookworm. Now we can actually start the S SCP stuff. I am. I am still sub. Alright. Ready? No. Fuck you. My throat is burning because of all of the A1 I am drinking. <laughs> Stop drinking it! <laughs> what is A1? It's type of steak sauce. Why are you drinking that? <laughs> I'm just cleaning out what's left at the bottom of the bowl. Anyway. And the answer is because I'm stupid, but I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Now, on to the SCP. <clears throat> SCP-1427 is a featureless... 14 meters by 2 meters by 2 meters beryllium bronze ceiling. Though originally recovered in an inactive state, the artifact presently produces a directional electromagnetic pulse every 7 ns. Disrupting or jamming the pulse reduces but does not eliminate the artifact's primary effects. The device's electromagnetic effects are therefore theorized to be a carrier wave for or side effect of the device's primary function. 
targets are selected randomly from the 20,736 nearest human subjects, ignoring those already exhibiting the effects of the pulse, but including those who are immune. The device appears to have no effective maximum range on several occasions. The device has exhibited the ability to, to make over the horizon broadcast to otherwise included subjects by deflecting its signal off of the Earth's anosphere. The artifact's means of detecting human consciousness and the Positive mechanism underlying its effects are presently unknown. Upon receipt of the signal, subjects permanently experience increased adjustability, severe abulia, and short-term memory loss. These effects are secondary to the artifact's primary effect, which is substantial reduction in prefrontal SQ2 signal due to information recovered from SP redacted. Foundation researchers presently believe that this reduced SQ2 signal corresponds to a significant reduction in or total destruction of the subject's subjective consciousness. Moderate authoritarian submissive personality traits appear to provide conditional immunity to the effects of the broadcast. Accordingly, since its activation, containment protocols have required placement in high population density areas subject to a totalitarian government. SCP-1427 was Wait a minute. What? Didn't we already do this one? Uh, we did, but the site reset it itself, so I have no idea where the fuck it goes. <laughs> oh. So it's only, it only got put one down, so we have to redo this one. Oh, well, I remember distinctly, because uh, later on it mentions that it's in North uh, Korea. X. <laughs> well, later on it mentions that it's XK. Ah. Uh, it could potentially cause the end of all human consciousness. Right. If not dealt with properly. Well, that solved that question. <laughs> that one. <laughs> Real quick. About to say, I was about to say, this is this sounds familiar. Where have I... <clears throat> I'm glad you remembered. I don't know why it sent that one back out of nowhere. It's so weird. I mean, you could have, you could have gone back to the vod, the vod, the vod. No, so Unfortunately, it's as oh, I was about to say. Unfortunately, it seems that North Korea has disappeared for Doctor Gray. Wow! <laughs> I want you to reassess its classification. That's true, Booker. <laughs> well, I reassessed it. There we go. All right, ready for the actual next SCP. Can the entirety of Ireland be an SCP? It probably is. <laughs> Well, actually, I think there actually is a part of Ireland that does not exist, but people think it exists. I think that's an SCP. Oh, that one has to be. Ooh, that one has to be fun. <laughs> oh, no. I'm going to okay. butcher this. Okay. All right. SCP-1428-1 is a creature that superficially resembles Corvus Macro... Rhinchos. It. Yeah. I can hold on. I can put it in oh. stream. Yeah. Tell tell me how it's spelled. Hold I'm on, guessing that it it's some chat. kind of corvid. Uh, that takes me. Go. There you go. Let's go stream planning. Yeah, Corvus is definitely a Corvid species. All right. Let's see what is large build crow? Yep. Oh well, now we know. <laughs> it's a large. It is crow. Yeah, it's a crow. All right. It is. You, it it's, it's a bird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, it's it... probably smarter than you though. 
Hey. Anyway. It is tripedal and does not possess a... Not gonna say that. Uh, special area. The third leg has been observed to remain tucked under its body unless it enters an active state. It does not need to eat, sleep, or breathe, does not age, and suffers no physical adverse effects from prolonged exposure to extremely high temperatures or radiation. SCP-428-1 has never been observed to communicate, and its intelligence is unclear. SCP-1428-1 has three... Three states, inert, passive, and active. While inert, it demonstrates no anomalous no, 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 anomalies or other than those previously stated. Passive states are marked as by gamma radiation emission at varying intensity. There is no clear co consistency in the charge of the radiation over time, generally reaching from 5 to 90 watts meters uh, m squared but occasionally reaches levels of 150 W M squared. The energy ranges from 1 to 1 1.5 MeV. During an active state, SCP-1428-1 will produce plasma and thermal energy consistent with the solar corona, coupled with a burst of gamma radiation and exponentially increased intensity. While the thermal effects of the active state persist only for an instant and are confined in the immediate vicinity of SP-1428-1, the sheer magnitude of, of the release invariably results in catastrophic damage. Following an active state, SP-1428-1 will begin to emit or bands consistent with solar radiation. These bands appear to induce a compulsive effect in human observers causing them to attempt to approach the, the source of the aura. Individuals under influence of this effect are completely unresponsive to external stimuli and will perform no action other than approaching the aura. The bands persist for approximately one full day after the active state has ended. While SP-1428-1 is in, in a passive state, it will enter active states once every three months unless exposed to external combustion and intensity of approximately 400 degrees centigrade or greater, which will cause it to become inert. While physical contact with SB-1428-1 is possible, any attempt to physically harm it will result in an active state. SB-1428-2 is a temple or shrine located in the redacted province of China, approximately redacted kilometers north North northwest of the site where SP 1428 1 was discovered. The site was constructed in approximately redacted BCE and contains religious texts and iconography inconsistent with the region. The most significant of these inconsistencies are the ritualistic form of human emulation and the presence of an entity known as redacted. The entity is a three-armed humanoid and is featured in numerous designs throughout the site. The majority of these designs depict what appears to be an SCP-1428-1 perched on the entity's shoulder. A 0.5 meters by 1.5 meters by 0.5 meter jade statue of Redactus is located at the approximate center of the site, an entity holds an object in each of its hands, the earth, the sun, and a partially burnt data expunged. This is genu genuine instead of being constructed of jade and shows no signs of decomposition despite being at least redacted years old. Additionally, while biologically dead, it generates in temperatures of 30 degrees centigrade and has been observed to make subtle movements it will occasionally fixate upon individuals that enter this range of sight and open its mouth as though trying to speak. After analyzing several texts recovered from the site and considerable texting, it is confirmed that the human emulation in SCP-1428-2's vicinity will effectively cause SCP-1428-1 to skip its next active state. If emulation occurs, the data expunge will begin to gesticulate as though silently laughing and the burnt tissue on its being will regenerate at a rate proportional 
to the number of individuals killed by the procedure. There you go. So you have to sacrifice people's lives or the 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 crow boy with three legs will go super critical. Apparently. That's a problem. So Fascination. I guess my first question is like uh refresh my memory, did it say anything about like how wide of an area the going active state affects? It just said it was catastrophic. Well, that's not very helpful. Let's see, and is it like a specific crow or does it like move like does it move around or take over the bodies of other crows? It just seems it's just this is it's just the same crow and doesn't move. Okay, have have the people at the SCP Foundation not heard of the saying one stone, two birds? Because I know there are at least two different bird SCPs. You do, do you do realize that it's called the secure, contain, protect. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> They're not just going to upright and kill it unless it's like 62. Or a oh, Scarlet yeah. King. <laughs> well, I mean, you make it not able to move. Like, tie it to a rock. Well, yeah, but it doesn't seem like it moves at all. Right. Already. Were you not listening to what Bright <laughs> literally just said? Not really. God damn it, child. So, I mean, you can still tie it to a rock if that rock is gone. And oh. Look for the bird. Start panicking. Uh oh. Apparently, I didn't see this as an emergency containment review. Two scientists were talking, and apparently, if, if the procedure hasn't been done, the bird will fly. It just started doing it. Like, the bird oh. will fly and spread radiation. Let's see. So, you have to sacrifice human lives to keep this bird from fucking going everywhere and irradiating the earth. Yep. Yep. Um. <laughs> terrifying. But also... Yeah, terrifying. I would say probably continent. Like... Yeah. I, I don't see this causing an end to humanity, but I do see it causing absolutely catastrophic effects on ecosystems and all. Oh, yeah. Yeah, and like, nuclear radiation takes a long time to, to heal. Yeah. I guess that's the big thing, is if it acts like like if it acts like uh radioactive material normally does. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like, it could easily cause, like, entire swaths of land to be uninhabitable for years or years. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's assuming it's in the lower ends of how much radiation is being absorbed into the well, the ground and the environment. Those it reminds me of like I think it was like a mini nuke tests or like nuclear tests that the U.S. government did in Nebraska. It's like mm -hmm. that, but larger, and it's a bird. <laughs> 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 and if I know anything from that NAS, uh, NAS, Nebraska experiment, uh, yeah, that will kill a lot of fucking people for like future years for like a long ass time. Yeah. It also raises the question, is that why no one lives in Nebraska? Or, not or just look at Chernobyl. People live in Nebraska, actually. Yeah, but Chernobyl's, like, quite literally one of the single most worst possible outcomes. Oh, one mil almost two million people live in Nebraska. 
two million out of the three hundred million people that live on in America. <laughs> two mil. Good hey. job, Nebraska. Anyway, I gotta go to the restroom real quick. I'll be right back. And I'm pretty sure uh, Hiroshima are still dealing with the radiation effects. Though. Yep, they are. Well, yeah. I'm pretty sure Nebraska by now has gotten like slightly better. That's like that's the that's the ironic thing. Earlier today, I was literally thinking about like potential conversations I would end up having with boomers, and like. One of the things I feel is really gross that a lot of older people tend to do is act as if there was, like, it was entirely justified for the U.S. to drop those bombs. They, okay, yeah, you ended, you ended World War II. Okay, that's pretty nice. You did it by causing tens of thousands of fucking civilian casualties in seconds the, like if you wanted to do a show of force you don't have to drop these bombs on fucking c- civilian populated areas and not only that I, even after that even after the u.s it, like claimed themselves to be forces of peace they then went to war with several other countries within like less than 10 years well obviously oh hey Bernie. We're talking about the U.S. government being shit. This all started. I gotta fix the the subathon goal. A radiation (laughs) break made us start talking shit about the U.S. government. Yeah, the the SCP we just looked at is a bird or a corvid, a crow. That if you don't sacrifice human lives to it, it starts giving off copious amounts of radiation and flying all over the place. And the thing is, they right? just found out that the bird can fly. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> How did I not make that joke yet? What's wrong with you? Anyway. I, was too fo- I was too focused on being pissed at the U.S. for dropping the nukes on, the, on, on Hiroshima and Nagasaki that I forgot to meme on Bright. This is unacceptable. <laughs> anyway, on to the next. SCP. Hey, you, you just you just needed me to come in and. Wow. Yeah, Make I mean, true. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> on to the next SCP. All right, SCP fourteen forty is a man of unknown ethnicity. Ethnicity. <laughs> Fuck! I can't say the word because stone cells say it. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. <laughs> Thank you. I don't know why my brain died. Ethnicity. Ethnicity. <laughs> Shut up. I don't know why I found that so funny. I'm sorry. Anyway, and age. When question about its name, place, or time of birth, SP. 1440 will refuse to answer, although it is unclear if this is due to the subject being unwillingly to share this information or not possessing it. Though the subject's appearance is that of an of an octogenarian, it is not no shown any signs of aging in the 50 years since first coming into the attention of the Foundation. SCP-1440's anomalous nature becomes apparent once it comes into contact with human population of man-made objects and remains in contact with them for longer than a few days. SCP-1440 has an acute adverse effect on everything connected to humanity. Prolonged exposure to any man-made object or person to it will cause increasingly destructive events to occur in SCP-1440's vicinity until the destruction or death of said human element. The only exceptions to this are SCP-1440 itself and its belongings. SCP-1440 appears to be aware of its effect on human populations and will attempt to avoid coming into contact with them whenever possible. Despite these intentions, SCP-1440 is compelled to travel in what seems to be a highly complex pattern, which invariably leads it into contact with human population. The exact nature of this pattern has not yet been successfully analyzed, and SP-1440 has not been able to provide any information concerning it. 
A subject is not actively hostile and will not resist attempts to contain it, though all such attempts have failed and led to a considerable loss of pers personnel and resources due to aforementioned anomalous properties. SCP-1440 was first brought to the Foundation's attention when it approached Dr. Redacted, a researcher at Site Redacted, on her commute to work. SCP-1440 showed unexplained knowledge of Dr. Redacted's work from the Foundation and requested her assistance. When Dr. Redacted inquired about the nature of the assistance the subject required, it responded that it hoped the Foundation would be able to destroy him. SCP-1440 was brought to Site Redacted for questioning, which led to destruction of the site, the deaths of Redacted personnel, and destruction of six safe and Euclid level SCP objects. All other attempts at containing SCP-1440 have resulted in similar occurrences. Now, before we judge this, I'm going to tell you the origin on how they how how they actually became immortal, because it it was officially made canon not that long ago. Okay. Uh they played cards with death and won. Death didn't like it, so they punished them and gave them this. Oh, yeah, I remember, like, one of the... Damn it, I don't know why. Did I scare you? No. But anyway. I remember when I first... When I first heard about this SCP, it was from, like, um... Oh, what was it? It was a uh, compilation of um, uh, dangerous SCPs or something like that. Yeah, of 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 Keter SCPs. I don't, I don't think it was Nightmare, but it was someone who did that, and uh, they took the time to uh, act out one of the uh, logs from that first incident. Or not the first incident, but one of the later incidents where yeah. towards the end, the guy goes, uh, if you're ever in a game with death, there's one thing you must never do. Win. Right. What's the SCP number? 1440. This kind of reminds me of this, like, one uh, this one uh, character from okay so do you any of y'all know the magnus archives barely all right it reminds me in the magnus archives there's this one guy who gives a statement and he apparently won a game with death because he was about to die and he won a game against death and he was basically he basically became immortal uh because of it but, like, everyone thought that he was just, like, some average dude. But I'm pretty sure, like, to him, he knew he was, like, decaying slowly and it was horrifying and painful. But, like, everyone just saw, like, a normal-ass dude. Or, like, a normal-ass kind of, like, you know, just, just a dude. And apparently someone won. Like, he gave a statement. And then I'm pretty sure after that, uh, he died because someone else won and someone else became immortal because they won against him. So basically, if you win a game with death, you get Cotards and Gotards. Basically, it's better to be dead than to win a game against death. Yeah, also, Cotards, in The Sims 3, uh, I'm afraid of The Sims, Sims 3. Right, as Sims a bird. 2, uh, if you want a game really? of chess against the Grim Reaper, you could bring a loved one back to life if they were dying. Yeah. Really? But, uh, oh, yeah. yeah and so if you want to see what I just did. Well, if you you probably missed what I just said. He did I bright as a text bird speech. and speak. Yeah, text to speech, bright as and a text bird. Text to speech. Oh, you uh, have text to speech mm -hmm. finally. Don't let your fucking. She me. does. <gasps> Do it. How how much? How well, you have to wait a minute. It's you're gonna have to wait a minute. Zero? It's your abyss. <gasps> mm -hmm. Don't do anything that get me banned. How do you? Oh no no yeah don't do anything that get no get her banned. For sure. How many points? Wait, how many? Oh, uh, where? Zero it? bits. It's, it's zero three. bits. How we just God. said that. Yeah, I know it's okay. It's zero bits, but how the fuck do you? Go, go to the, go <laughs> to the sound alerts thing below the stream. I like how, how we got heavily sidetracked. 
it just gives me like hmm it gives me like the uwu sounds and shit keep going oh, over yeah okay good job right is the ultimate trans abomination bert i hate you <laughs> anyway um yeah, as a side note, to those who don't know, Cotard's, uh, I don't know if it's called Cotard's syndrome or Cotard's disease, but it's basically a mental disorder in which a person becomes convinced that they are a corpse or in some way dead and are rotting and decaying. Mm. That is terrifying. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a really, really weird and rare mental illness, but it has. Why? Oh, yeah. crazy. Why are turfs trending? Don't worry about it. Uh, I Where don't aren't know. they? Um, Where aren't they? Any, anyway, yes. uh, I'd say, uh, I'd say city. It's it's a really sad SCP. <laughs> they don't want yeah. this. Anyone in disagreement with city? Because I kind of see that. Like it's it's not going to destroy a continent or a country. You know, he's just wandering around, and if he spends too much time near large populated areas, uh, shit goes down. Yeah. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to focus on delivering this product oh. in GTA, otherwise I'm going to not sell it all on time. Okay. I still hear paying attention. Just... All right. So, ready for the next SCP? I suppose. Alright. Yeah. Go ahead. Alright, this is SCP-1447. Although current containment measures in this... Uh, although current containment measures and the speeds at which SCP-1447-1 typically move make close observation impossible, initial recovery and SCP-1447-1's numerous breach attempts have su substantiated eyewitnesses' reports of its appearance. SCP-1447-1 is a quasi-physical humanoid entity resembling an Asian male in traditional Tibetan Buddhist monastic garb. Its face is visually distorted and indistinct, indistinct even when viewed on high-speed footage. SCP-1447-1 typically remains in constant motion, frequently in excess of 200 kilometers per hour for approximately 20 hours a day, which time is chiefly spent attacking the interior of its shell. Cell. Hell. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> It's a turtle. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Reinforcing SCP-1447-1's 1447 containment unit with hardened steel plating has been successful in reducing the in incidence of breaches, but has not proven total immune to SCP-1447-1's efforts. SCP-1447-1 is very capable of exploiting small breaches in its containment unit and is capable to insert itself through apertures as small as 200 UM in diameter. Boiting. What? Boiting, not exploding. Capable of exploit. It says exploiting. Yeah, you said, said exploding. exploding. Oh, I said exploding. If Bright was an avatar, the last airbender character, she would be an airbender. Oh, uh, I love I, I I love these uh these things. It's like fifty percent uh uh off topic conversations, ten percent on topic conversations, and forty percent shitting on Bright's pronunciations. Fuck off. Anyway. <laughs> SCP-1447-1 is largely resistant to standard issue sidearms. Higher caliber munitions appear to temporarily disrupt SCP-1447-1's physical form, causing it th distress and has been effective at forcing it back into containment. High explosives have been proven effective 
at completely dissipating SP-1447-1. However, when attacked in this manner, SP-1447-1 has shown the capacity to rematerialize anywhere in the immediate vicinity, ignoring any intervening barriers. Furthermore, during breach 1447-05, SP-1447-1 apparently goaded security personnel into employing explosives near the containment area of SCP redacted, resulting in an additional breach event. Attempts at communication with the entity to determine sentience remain inconclusive. Although SCP-1447-1 responds to questions, its vocalizations are largely in unintelligible. Analysis has revealed them to be garbled versions of mantras in the, in the Tibetan Buddhist tradition, repeated hundreds of times a second. SCP-1447-1 is not implacably hostile to human life and remains focused on remaining and killing SCP-1447-2. However, Foundation personnel who attempt to impede its progress are subject to attack and if frustrated in its efforts, it has been observed to become indescribably violent. SCP-1447-2 is a redacted-year-old Caucasian male who claims to be redacted. A computer hardware and software entrepreneur of some note, SCP-1447-2 has been unable to explain the continued activity in the public eye of its namesake, a figure who shares SCP-1447-2's alleged identity and life history, but has speculated that he may be an imposter hired by his business associates. His counterpart is to be kept under surveillance by the Foundation personnel as another possibility is that either SP-1447-2 or his counterpart is the entity similar to SP-1447-1. And that's it. Yeah, I'm bright. I'm bright. I did so I I subbed it a little bit ago. Where? I just see bookworms. I don't see yours. Okay. Yeah, it doesn't show up in chat or anything. I did sub a little bit ago, but it was through right. um crime. Ah, that's probably why it didn't go through. Like it, 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 it I, it pro that's probably why it didn't go through the subathon, uh, gauge, or whatever. I don't think it counts primes. Mm. So point. Hold on, I can. Get that for you. Okay, so point being, uh, this SCP is a Tibetan monk with a massive case of the Zoomies. Yep. Who's super pissed and wants to kill some white guy. <laughs> yep. I don't kill anyone who gets in the way. Uh. What did the white guy do? Wait, it, does it say the specific white guy, guy or is it just a white guy? It's the, the name is redacted. Yeah, it's redacted. <laughs> Wait. It's like a specific white businessman. Someone said it was Steve Jobs. I, I, I'm looking at a meme right now and someone says Steve Jobs. <laughs> okay, I, I, I'm going to put in stream planning. I'm putting this in this image okay. in stream planning. Steve Jobs is... or Elon Musk? I would say Elon Musk. Elon Counter, Musk is like counter offer. Jeff Bezos. How about all oh, yeah, three Bezos, of them? Actually, sure. I have an idea. Once the <laughs> monk gets one of them, he goes for all of them. Elon <laughs> Monk. Oh my gosh! Anyway, okay, this guy deserved it. Will not. Can okay? Look, I know he goes after men, but can he go after J.K. Rowling? Because for a while, <laughs> J.K. Rowling. Oh wait, never had mind. A with a male name. Never a mind. Name. It was, I was reading it wrong. Apparently, the creature at first didn't wasn't doing anything bad at first. Really, it was doing harmless pranks. Hold on, here's what what fourteen forty seven dash two said in an interview. Uh, yes, I imagined him as a jolly. 
a prankster. It would play practical jokes on me and then other monks, but over time it grew more, more and more spiteful. What happened? It began to do things like putting pots of scalding hot water over doors. He had snakes and other sandals. Hermos at first, then poisonous. So okay. over time, he became more of a dick. <laughs> what? What happened to this Tibetan monk? I don't to make know. Him, to make him go from a pacifist to whatever the fuck this is. Rich white people, that's it. That's the answer. You know what? That's the only answer you need. You know what? That's fair. Wait. Uh, <laughs> um, I, I would like to vote that this goes into spoon tier. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, hold on, hold on. Here's another thing that's kind of weird. The researcher asks this. Tell me, what happens if SCP-1447-1 kills you? I, I don't have to listen to this. Will SCP-1447-1 cease to exist if you die? Answer the question. I refuse to answer. He knows something. Want... Does... I still want to know, is it possible for the specific Tibetan monk to hunt down J.K. Rowling? Dragon! It is Hypothetically, in the SCP universe, what the fuck? It is feasibly possible, but we don't know if the Tibetan monk would want to do that. The other way, I, I say that this goes in spook tier because this was worth a laugh. And besides that, ultimately, like, he just wants to yeah, kill like, one guy, and that's it. Like, he I causes collateral damage, and he'll kill people who get in the way, but, like, he he's not much of a threat outside he, of the fact that he's just really, really fucking fast and keeps bumping into shit. I think the <laughs> funniest thing is a lot of the SCP f uh, f uh, fan base has just collectively agreed that the motherfucker is going after Steve Jobs. That's <laughs> 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 so great! Wait, like they wait. Just said, yeah, it's Steve Jobs. Wait, we've got a prop. Isn't Steve Jobs dead? Is he? I'm pretty so. sure he's dead. Wait. Yeah, I'm fairly confident. If he's dead, then he, if he's dead, then he, he got his job done. Oh my god, he is dead. <laughs> is he? <laughs> he yeah, got taken dead. out by the monk. <laughs> he died in 2011. Bokum says because the SCP got him already, lol. Okay, so in that case, uh, he's going. I I would say he's either he's going after either, uh, Bill Gates, Elon Musk, or uh, Bezos, or J.K. Rowling. H humble. Bezos. We we can we can hope we can hope J.K. Rowling as well. Look, if all I'm saying is if. He he just he looks at names and he's like yeah okay and he looks at J.K. Rowling's old pen name, then maybe he's just like oh yeah okay I'll go after this dude and then just what? sees J.K. Rowling and be like yeah you're a bitch anyway so bah. no she still uses that name how the fuck does she, still, she hate trans she still, women but uses her her like, okay so the, her thing I hate her the thing is she still has that on her. Like Twitter, yeah. So, uh, like, yeah, she still uses it. Can we just all collectively just call J.K. Rowling Robert Galbraith instead of J.K. Rowling if she wants yeah, to be a Galbraith? Of people, Galbraith, Galbraith. Did you see like the mental breakdown like fan fiction she posted? I really didn't care. Is it gone? I think it might be gone. Anyway, are you ready to continue? Uh, okay. yeah, okay, anyway, right. anyway, let's stop talking about the turf queen. Right. Oh, this is not stop talking about the turfer, my meister turfer. <laughs> oh yeah. Also, oh yeah, I can already see how this is gonna be perfect to what's happening in our lives right now. Oh boy. <laughs> You're is about to see. Problem? SCP-1462 is a strain of airborne virus transmitted via fungal spores. God damn it. <laughs> the fungus is dangerous only to trees, but spores can infect both plants and animals with the virus. This virus causes the host organism's natural fluids to be replaced with petroleum and 
and a lot life wheeze. <laughs> I'm sorry, I can't I don't know how to say this word. It it replaces a person's <laughs> body fluids with petroleum. Yep. What the fuck? <laughs> It just fills my veins with Vaseline. <laughs> Actually, no, petroleum more looks like uh, like soy sauce than... Anyway. Oh, yeah, but Vaseline is literally petroleum jelly. Yeah, yeah. but it also, was just petroleum. Anyway, anyway, on with the SCP. It's not done yet. An animal says this conversation results in widespread chronic contagious contagi contagi and hectic for free symptoms, concluding with massive organ failure and death. Afterwards, all non-skeletal body mass converts into petroleum during decomposition, despite a 100% fatality rate. Standard antiviral precautions are successful in preventing infection from one individual to another. In plants... Huh? A 150% lethality rate. Jesus Right. 100%. Oh, 100. It sounded like you said 150%. I was about to say, is that something new? No, it's 100% fatality it's, rate. It's so deadly that it's killing 50% of the people that don't have it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. In plants, infection increases photosynthetic photosynthetic efficiency as the black pigment shifts allow for more complete light absorption and alteration of this stomata resulting initially in improved heat release and increased intake of CO2. However, each infected plant also releases trace amounts of pheromone during CO2 intake. Sufficient saturation causes the immediate closure of the stomata and subsequent inability to release heat in all infected trees. This reaction is unique to, to trees and notably absent in, in any other instance of infection. Infected areas and This is just a renewable energy oh. source. <laughs> infected trees inevitably ignite and set fire to surrounding infected flora. Liquefied remains of fauna ensure height high quantities of flammable gas and surface accelerant leading to rapid expansion of the burn area through infected territory. The final stage of the burn cycle is a firestorm resulting in an aerial dispersal of part particulate and fungal spores over twice the original area. As the air currents caused by the conflagration spread the spores across progressively larger expanses of, of woodland. It should be noted that the rate of expansion per burn cycle should completely consume the largest force on the earth within one year. After, while sending enough particulate and spore matter to the stratosphere and troposphere to simultaneously threaten the planet with both global exposure to SCB-1462 and nuclear winter. Jesus Christ, what the So, fuck? don't let this Ow. SCP go to California. There are trees nope. in California. I was talking. I, I was joking because oh. the California gender part reveal parties, setting fire oh. to forest. I was making a joke. There are trees in California. Yeah. Did you know, shot, Did you dead ass just ask <laughs> if there are trees in California? I'm joking. I know there okay. are trees. How the fuck else would there be? Fucking. How the fuck else would there be what? fucking what? giant at, fires all the at time? At first, I thought this was just going to be slightly harmless. Like, well, just put replacing... Fires don't need trees. Right. Also, There's brush fires. Yeah. Also, yeah. I was thinking... I thought this SCP was just going to be not as dangerous as just replaces fluids with petroleum. No, it just <laughs> creates firestorms. <laughs> and can, if, you, if you had said that there's like a giant there's like a, there's like literally a forest that is a, there's a national forest. You would be right. There's a literal national forest and like that has some of the huge, some humongous fucking trees in, uh, over there. So 
God damn it, the narcs are coming after my oregano. <laughs> so what? basically, this SCP is just a literal uh, incendiary bomb <laughs> waiting to go off. Yeah, how the how the flying <laughs> fuck do we stop this from? I don't know. How the... I, well, for starters, it's obviously an X game. I mean, yeah, wait, how did they even, how did they even capture it? <laughs> uh, uh, oh, they have multiple containment failures. Oh, god damn it. Oh, how to take care of it is they get a biohazard incinerator. Mm. On petroleum. Yeah, it's in rape petroleum. <laughs> okay. Can... It's always fucking if... petroleum. <laughs> Go ahead. Does that mean if someone is infected with this thing and you just decided to, like, like cut their finger, could you just drink the petroleum? What they the would f... be dead. What the fuck <laughs> is your... That point. Okay, okay we, we need... We definitely need a the fuck penguin um like rewar like reward thing yeah i, I want to be able to spend my anomalies to say what the fuck penguin oh well this i okay i placed it on... all right look this where the mouse awesome. is that's where the scp is where, where the fuck is your mouse right there right there on the oh, right there it look that's invisible. where the scp is <laughs> okay look i'll uh, look okay the, th the thoughts that come out of my mind usually aren't this bad, but since I can talk uncensored and shit, well, not uncensored, but like um, pretty much not uncensored. Penguin? Just like, not uncensored, not uncensored, but I can talk about like kind of I... with restrictions more freely though, because I know y'all. I this had is to. What fucking undiagnosed ADHD, possibly <laughs> autism, does to a motherfucker. I had to fucking call. My 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 place where I grow oregano, fucking oregano, because Twitch is weird about talking about fictional crimes in a video game. Hmm. Also, penguin, mm -hmm. you are under eighteen. There's I yeah. You're... I posted the SCP picture on stream planning. If you actually wanted to see it, is it three? Is this true? I am currently being shot at by the narcs, so give me a minute. Oh my god. This is gonna so, sound so bad saying this SCP's, you know, how it has a code name or whatever, each SCP has a code name. It's gonna sound so bad saying it's code name. And I'm, after oh, this no. next SCP, I'm gonna need to go get my coffee. Alright, Hatchet, this SCP's code name is Senor Purple. What? <laughs> what? Senor Purple. What isn't purple in Spanish, Morado? Or la? Yeah, El Morado. What? All I know is that sounds like the uh, a type of name I would expect to see on sites that I can't talk about right now. Oh, I literally can't. Okay. Or, peop or people on Twitter trying to make it like an S that like white people specifically. I can't to even it describe what it is because it's a heavily induced a medic agent of sorts. Uh oh. And it keeps changing its own article, but the foundation was able to get at the bottom of its description. You know what? All you can do. All you, okay, you know all you can know at this time. Proceed to Provisional Site 33 and do not stop moving. Good luck. <laughs> so. Thanks. Thanks, Foundation. That was real helpful. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so apparently, sometimes it. Wait, I just realized. <laughs> it's, um. 
is containment class. The further you go down, it goes from just Keter to Keter arriving. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Keter, Keter arriving <laughs> is a horrifying term. Keter arriving. Oh, right. did you, how did you like threat? my te text-to-speech thing I just did? I heard. Because the thing is, Keter arriving, <laughs> depending <laughs> on who the fuck you're talking to, could mean very many things, and that is horrifying. It could be a threat. Uh, oh no. <laughs> oh, so no. how do we place this one? Because we have no idea what the fuck it is. <laughs> but Spood we know tier. it's I, coming for us. I, I don't think spoo tier because it sounds dangerous. It's a, um, it's a very Maybe. dangerous medic agent because it keeps changing its own article. We need a what the fuck tier. <laughs> we need a tier to just put complete, like, we have no idea where to put this in. What the fuck tier. Okay, I have an idea. Look up a, like, stunned face emoji. Put that oh. as the title. Okay, hold on. <laughs> Hold on, here. Here's some procedures on what to do if you're trapped by it. Or surprise Pikachu is, face. Hold is, on. is kissing it no. an option? No. no? Uh. Retrieve a pistol. Raise the pistol. Aim the pistol at your forehead. Okay, the SBF obviously hacked this document because it says pull the trigger three times. <laughs> Aim the pistol away from your body once the trigger has been pulled. Load one bullet into the pistol. Turn to face SCP-1463. Fire into SCP-1463. <laughs> yeah, we... Yeah, you, you, you need to add a what the fuck tier. <laughs> Where do I put that above of, though? <laughs> <laughs> uh, put it, put it below spoon tier. It's for sheer confusion. And Spood is pretty confusing. Well, that was a nice, that was a nice SCP to hear about before going and getting coffee. And yeah, you've got to make either either make the title of what the fuck tier, uh, um, a surprise or like a confused emoji face or. Oh, surprised Pikachu. I, I don't know how to... You can't do emojis on this. You gotta type. I can't then, uh, just... Uh, uh it, it will be what the flying fuck to you. I could just do WTF. Yeah. What the oh, fuck did I just... Alright, there we go. I just saw a random ass thing. What the fuck is going on in the hold? Ocean destroys Vosh? What? What? What have I not been paying attention to? See, I don't want to fucking know. I need to gather information on this. Oh, Bookworms has about a religion. Oh, interesting. Okay, so Senior Purple was very interesting because we have no idea what the fuck it is. <laughs> at, at least we know it's not like 579. Who literally resetted the world with 055. <laughs> but seriously, what the fuck is Senior Purple? Oh dear! Oh, for fuck's sake! And and it's Ocean having to respond to Vosh being dumb anti theist. Fun. There, I got the next SCP ready. Oh yeah, yeah of course. Fine. What do you expect? All right, let's so see it. Number fifty-two. One reason, li a giant list I have for reasons I don't like Vosh. Uh, uh anyway, hold on. Had a chance to say something. I'm gonna go get my coffee.
All right. Have fun. So I will be back. If you want to continue without me, that's fine. But fuck. I'm just I'm just gonna talk about SCP drama that happened recently. Ah, uh, gotcha. Oh boy, what happened? Wait, um, has it been? Wait, real quick. Has it been mentioned whether or not the convo is gonna be recorded and put up on Ocean's channel? Who knows? I have no idea. So I want to hear that at a later time. Either way, yeah, I'll I'll be back. All right. All right. Anyway, SCP drama has been happening. Um, Spanish branch has been caught. Um. Turning the LGBTQA plus symbols to its regular symbol. Why? I don't know, but the only way they can literally make them stop is for an entire Spanish branch to just turn all the symbols to regular ones. Because they would refuse to turn it back to normal. Saying it wasn't SCP enough or whatever. However, all the symbols will remain on other, uh, you know. So in short, they were just homophobic pieces of shit. Yeah, but here's the first, the funny thing is, they, they really fucked up because a lot of the verse Jenners who wrote, wrote and translated the stuff, and not, well, not translated, but wrote the stories and let it be translated to the Spanish branch, demanded that it be taken off because they weren't happy with that. So a lot of the first gen is gone, deleted off the Spanish branch. Well, that's sad. I mean, you they got pissed off. I mean, yeah, but like all the Spanish creators and stuff that had like and the reason why I said it's really bad is because the first gen is still the most popular gen. <laughs> I can have 049, 096, 682, 999, 035. Still has some, it's still the most popular gen. So yeah, that happened recently. I think it only happened like three days ago. Damn. I mean, I knew something was going to happen when they did that with the, like, the symbols. I was like, alright, how long is it going to take? First happened was that site we don't speak of. That got created by people who hate the symbols whatsoever. And decided to make another site that we're not allowed to talk about on Twitch. Because of reasons. And now this happened. Wait, what the fuck? Why is it saying two days to go on the subathon thing? Like, yeah, I just jumped to the, to the freaking 16th. We're no longer on the 14th anymore. We're on the 16th. Fuck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Anyway, I'm gonna put an intermission now. Wait. Yeah, I'm gonna put an intermission now. Among us, among us, among Wait, us, among us. Before I among do. Us, among us, among us, among us, among us. You stop among saying us? fucking among us. Among us. Oh, okay. That's fair. Where? Alright. All right. Now let's start. SCP-1466 is an even 21-digit integer. It cannot be expressed as a sum of two prime numbers, thus disproving Goldback's conjecture. Whether other counterexamples of Goldback's conjecture exi exist, and whether they share SCP-1466 anomalous properties, it is unknown. 
SP1466 anomalous properties only manifest when it is shown to dis to disprove Goldbank's conjecture. One instance of SP1466-A will manifest 34 seconds after the completion of calculations at the location of each device involved in the process. SCP-1466-A are invisible spheres 2.8 meters in diameter that immediately obliterate all matter they intersect. SCP-1466-A is our motionless relative to the sun and will move at, at a speed and direction relative to Earth dependent on the time and location of manifestation. SCP-1466-A Destroy matter at on a, on the atomic level, resulting in in the partial elimination of chemical compounds, and subsequently the creation of a variety of violently reactive chemicals. The voids left by annihilated liquids and gases will typically implode with the subsequent shock wave dispersing with the generated chemicals into the surrounding area. While SCP-1466-6 A have not been tracked outside of Earth's atmosphere. They have presumed to demanifest or exit Earth's orbit within one year, as no instance has been encountered more than once. The danger posed by SCP 1466 A and, it, and its byproducts are largely dependent on the circumstances immediately surrounding manifestation. A worst case scenario would result from the verification of SP 1466 by a distributed com computing project run largely on the personal computers with resources available to the foundation, a breach of secrecy could potentially result if more than redacted devices are used. Casualties would be most likely equal or exceed the number of devices used. SCP-1466-B refers to the spontaneous appearance of Plain text files exclusively containing SP-1466 on devices, attempting to verify the Goldback conjecture typically appearing in the root directory. There is no evidence to indicate that this is performed through conventional methods of file creation or placement. SP-1466-B occurs three to four times per year, affecting progressively more powerful computers or distributed computing projects if the file is accessed. But no attempt to verify SP-1466 is made on the affected device within 83 days. It is spontaneously deleted. There you go, that's the SCP. A lot of computer talk. Okay, can I be heard? Yes. Okay, apparently my closing... My 117 tabs of porn caused my internet to try to kill me. What? I closed the tabs. I missed the vast majority of whatever you've been saying for the past five minutes. It's basically an SCP that wants to basically disprove Goldback's conjecture. And and our spheres that can literally eliminate chemical compounds at an atomic level. I see times two. Yeah, and they only appear when they want to disprove Goldback's conjecture. <laughs> like what the someone's fuck? talking about. <laughs> okay, and the fuck is Goldback's conjecture? I don't know. I'm looking it up now. Goldback's conjecture. Goldback's conjecture and, yet, and number theory assertion that every even counting number greater than two is equal to the sum of two prime numbers. Well, I have no idea what that meant. Well, that's what it is. That means any any number bigger than two has two prime numbers. Two prime numbers. That's the end. It's 
it's been too long right. since I gave a single shit about math on this SCP just hates math. <laughs> uh, hates Steinbeck. Oh, well, even in footnotes, I didn't realize it. It's, it literally said what Goldback's conjecture was in footnotes. <laughs> uh. And yes, bookworm, that is a lot of tabs. I'm proud of myself. Bro, oh, what the? F where the fuck do we put this thing? It just hates this form of math. I have no clue. You know what? Since it's math, what the fuck? <laughs> oh, what the fuck, dear? <laughs> I mean, we could do that there. Uh, Darna says spood. What do you think, Hatchet? I mean, it's dangerous when everyone wants to talk about the method. <laughs> the, I mean, just should should Spood be associated with with this with this thing? <gasps> Maybe. I mean, do they like math? Mm -hmm. Trying to do something real quick. Sorry. Yeah. I guess now it's up to me whether or not to put it in what the fuck or. Spood. Wow, okay, so the next SCP is gonna be easy because apparently it's been reclassified. <laughs> From cater to safe. Damn. So we can be quickly move you to reassign. Well, let's hear it, though. Well, we haven't... Okay, so I'll, I'll just put it in... And what the fuck? Alright. Okay. I'll read it. SCP-1500 is a humanoid that demonstrates... Vegetal characteristics, it is capable of photosynthesis due to gradual replacement of melanin in its skin with, with chlorophyll. If left in one place for an extended period of time, SP-1500 will extend thin fibers onto the ground that seek out soil and draw nutrients and water from it. During the course of, of its containment, SP-1500 has become steadily more plant-like. As of redacted, SP-1500 has reported great Difficulty in moving on its own, an examination has revealed that cellulose now surrounds many cells in SP-1500's body. Due to SP-1500's transitional state, it is extraordinarily fragile and is to be left undisturbed to prevent damage. At time of... Oh, wait, no, it's... it's I didn't see level 3 clearance or higher. I was reading the safe class. Hold on, I'll read the Keter class. Why did they have two? Alright. So let me just move them off of reassign real quick. It's really, it's really small red writing. Oh, I'm sorry. But anyway, alright, I got it. SCP-1500 is a featureless humanoid with smooth greenish-gray skin and a highly distended adamant. Its limbs are long and multi-jointed, its skin is metallic in texture and very durable, demonstrating a tensile strength of about 1.2 gigapascals. Though it has no visible sensory organs, it apparently possesses senses roughly equal to that of a human. 
It cannot speak and does not need to eat, breathe, or sleep. Any human within line of sight of SCP-1500 experiences headaches, nausea, and feeling of fear. These gradually increase for amount of time typically between 200 seconds and 530 seconds until the subject loses consciousness for approximately 15 seconds. Upon awakening, the subject re retains no memory of their previous time exposed to SP-1500 and thereafter perceives SP-1500 as an occasion human male named Zachary Callahan. Subject's memories are altered to include SV-1500 usually as a friend from childhood or early adulthood. Subjects are also capable of communicating with SCP-1500. No attempts to reverse this change have proven effective to date. The Onestics are able to move, remove memories of SCP-1500, albeit at a reduced success rate. Affected individuals continue to perceive SCP-1500 as a human in any future interactions. All right, let me, so far it doesn't look like it's Keter. Let me go look at the addendum. Okay, the addendum. Addendum 1500-20. As of redacted, an estimated 23,000 people across the world have been affected by SB-15,000. A possible note is that SB-15,000 is disproportionately targeted, targeting political or military figures and foundation personnel. Upgrade to Keter requested. All right, so that's SB fifteen hundred. I have been completely distracted the whole time. Hey, Chad. I'm I'm trying to figure out whether or not Ocean's gonna be uploading this combo later. <laughs> Listen to me, damn it! I'm not repeating myself. <laughs> All right, I'll just see what it does. Basically, first you go through. If you're exposed to it, you go through headaches, nausea, and feeling of fear. Then you pass out of consciousness for a while. Then you just see them as a normal human being. And able to communicate with them. And apparently the people it likes to target. Out of the 23,000 people it's already targeted. Is political, military, or foundation personnel. See. So then certain groups? I guess so. I got confused at first because I didn't see the small red font. It's the only thing I hear about certain things. Oh, I... We're about to get into a very depressing one. But it's also one of my favorites. You probably already know who it is. Joe Schmo. Oh no. <laughs> Not Joe Schmo. Yeah, he's a really sad one. All right. Description. SCB-1504 is a Caucasian male standing at 1.95 meters tall. The subject's appearance is unremarkable aside from a small birthmark on its right shoulder. SCB-1504's anomalous traits include its inability to be harmed or killed. All actions carried out by SCB-1504 will be perceived by surrounding individuals as being within expectations for the situation. SP-1504 has been known to attack personnel who will, who will then believe circumstance of their own doing what has hurt them. Subject is able to affect electronic and automatic systems. SP-1504 was brought to attention of the Foundation because of its inability to be harmed and was classified as a anomalous object after initial testing. The subject was held at site redacted in the anomalous object wing of the facility. On redacted, a site-wide security failure and subsequent containment breach resulted in the on-site nuclear warhead being detonated. SB-1504 was declared missing after a search of the site did not reveal a confirmed death. A low-priority search was issued, but 
but was soon raised to high priority after the document was found. MTF-806, aka Awareness Filters, was informed to find SCP-1504. Interview with SCP-1504. Begin log. What is your name? I'm not going to tell you. You'll just ignore me. Okay, now what year were you born? Told you. You wouldn't even notice how I punched you in the nose. Thank you for the year, but do you have the, an exact date? I didn't give you a fucking year. Hey, hey, Doc, watch this. SCP-1504 got up from the seat and proceeded to physically assault Dr. Lloyd. Subject then returned to its seat. Oh, excuse me, my nose is bleeding. Dr. Lloyd left the room and returned a few minutes later. I'm sorry, that was weird. I've never been prone to random nosebleeds. It's because I fucking punched you. Maybe do you know why you can't be hurt? I could say anything. I could do anything. I could say that I'm gonna... Not saying that word. Uh, kill, kill, kill your wife and you, you won't even notice. Hell, I could actually... Kill your wife and you won't notice. I'm not saying the R word. I'm living in a virtual hell because I can't die. I'm going to step aside outside this room and take the guard's gun. I'm going to sh auto homicide with that gun and nothing fucking nothing is going to happen. Such that it appears to be in tears at this point. Do you know what it feels like to be in a room crowded with people and they all ignore you? Do you know how hellish my life is? I want to die. That's fine. Thank you for your cooperation with today's interview. You may return to your room. And log. Everyone understands what I mean by the R word, right? Yes. Okay. Also, I have to, I have to take a moment to laugh because keep keeping an eye on uh, the chat um, in the hold. That's Ocean versus Vosh. Apparently, Vosh has at this point directly admitted to having no, uh, no knowledge on religion in a debate that is entirely around religion, which I find incredibly funny. That said, this is spooked here because it is so he, depressing. He's so basically sad. just this like. It's like Dr. Bright, but everyone ignores him. Because Dr. Yeah, Bright like also he, wants to die. It's it's quite literally, he has the ultimate form of uh, effective isolation. Mm -hmm. uh, what's, what's, what's the term I'm thinking of? Neglection? Uh, yeah, that's thing in prison. Solitary confinement. Uh, he has the ultimate oh. form of solitary confinement. I noticed an SCP we're going to have to talk about eventually, where it's literally an SCP where you put them in a prison cell, and you write down how long you want them to be in there, and they'll be put in a dark, teleported to a dark space where all their senses are taken away, and are just there for the entire time, unable to die. Oh, They're just there. Fuck. Yeah, it's that literally is... called solitary confinement. <laughs> that is quite possibly one of the most fucked up forms of torture that can be thought of. Yeah, see, here's the thing. There's actually a story where a police officer uh, that was it there was dating this nurse and this prisoner beat the living crap out of them and, and killed them. And he put that man in there for a hundred years. He lived for a hundred years. He didn't age or anything. Though he was mentally mad as soon as he came out. Well, yeah. No <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> but imagine having no senses. Stuck in complete darkness. Unable to do anything. For a hundred years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
so like people knew that scp existed in and it's almost properties but everyone kept quiet about it they didn't tell the foundation <laughs> well it's not that they didn't tell the foundation out of maliciousness they literally didn't know because one of his anomalous properties is no one can actually no, tell not what Joe Smo. I was talking about the solitary confinement. Oh, the solitary con Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> it's fine. I think it's like a high uh, number. So, we won't see for a while. Yeah. Either way, um, I say Joe Schmo goes to Spood tier. Fair. Because that, get that man a fucking hug. Like that guy needs a fucking hug. Right. I, I still think that solitary confinement is one of the very few SPs that's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah. Well, what do you mean one of the few SCPs that's really fucked up? I'm talking about like some really depressing and fucked up at the same time. Like it's like like two three one, that solitary confinement. I'm talking about this one guy... that's Wait, what? I would say this guy as well. Yeah, that's true. But yeah. It's just, this is just one guy rather than affecting multiple people. I'm just thought, I mean, like, the very few, like, SCBs are extremely dark. Yeah. <laughs> or, uh, what was it, the Red Reality? Oh, yeah. That one's so sad. Yeah. Either way, spoot tier. Let's move on to something that'll hopefully make me laugh. Well, it contains birds, so you can make bird jokes, you piece of shit. <laughs> bird. Alright. SCP-1505 refers to an anomalous self-propagating time loop stemming from a single adult common raven. <laughs> Specimens... Bird. Shush. Specimens of SP-1505 are observed to naturally repeat within a cycle every 10 hours. At the end of the cycle, each specimen will instantly duplicate itself twice, while the parent will respawn at its point of origin to begin its life cycle again, repeating its behavior exactly as before. Duplicates are observed to act independently of the parent and will have different behavioral cycles, Changes to the environment or containment seem to have no effect on behavior, and specimens will act out of their emotions as before, regardless of what obstacle it is presented with. All specimens will repeat this cycle indefinitely. Bird, and... bird, bird, laughing face. Really? All yeah. specimens will repeat this cycle indefinitely until its parent specimen is either killed or is eradicated as part of a larger, larger paradoxical reset. A direct kill is not capable of eliminating a specimen as it will instantly respawn at its point of origin upon death. Any kill will also result in resetting the specimen's cycle, effectively creating a new cycle where a specimen will behave differently than the previous cycle. In theory, if SCP-1505-alpha is killed slash reset, all subsequent duplicates should be eliminated. If left unchecked, SP-1505 could have an overwhelmingly disastrous effect on agriculture, the environment, and civilization itself as flux propagate exponentially. Large-scale buildup of feces have led to structural damage as uric acid and the droppings have been observed to corrode stone, metal, and masonry over time. As with other avian species, the bacteria, fungal agents, and Ectoparasites found in the droppings pose a serious health risk to humans. All specimens of SP-1505 also appear to be carriers of an avian influenza virus. And there you go. So it's sick birds that go everywhere ba, and ba, make ba, things bird, sick. Bird, bird. bird is the word. Really? What did you say, Darna? Bird song. Uh, yeah, I have the stream muted. Yeah, it's but uh, um, 
Let's where, see. Where would this bird go? Well, birds. This collection of birds. So I just Wait, realized maybe... this is uh, this is basically just a Gary's mod bird. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Because you can make so many duplicate glitches in Gary's Mod. This is just a Gary's Mod bird that's dangerous. Uh, yeah, I, I can see it. <laughs> um, oh, I'd say continent. Yeah. It's like, I doubt it would destroy a continent, but sure as hell gonna fuck everyone on a continent over, probably. Oh, yeah. We're already dealing with a deadly virus right now <laughs> yeah and that, then we're gonna get we're gonna we're gonna be dealing with both coronavirus and extra special birth <laughs> <laughs> the birdiest of bird flus i just realized there's two bird scps put next to each other <laughs> plus monkeypox Oh yeah, plus monkey box. Oh yeah, true. Alright. We ready for our next SCP? Is it going to have to do with your relatives? Fuck off. That wasn't it, a valid answer to my question. I don't care. Fuck off. Anyway. SCP-1506 is the designation for a global phenomenon which spontaneously generates instances of SCP-1506-1. SCP-1506-1 is the designation for anomalous colonies of at least approximately 900 spiders of mixed species by application of multiple varieties of spider silk. SP-1506-1 is able to build a complex web structure less dense than air in which these spiders may live. SP-1506-1 exhibits remarkable behavior as individual spiders are rarely seen working in cooperation and never in cross-species cooperation. SCP-1506-1 also shows signs of pre predation behavior, web tension strength, and web adhesion. SCP-1506-1 has been found at altitudes of up to 18 kilometers. In order to change altitude, the volume of SCP-1506-1 is increased or decreased, suggesting the web structure is being consistently maintained. When SCP-1506-1 descends below 500 meters, it is to be assumed that the colony will soon begin predation behavior. Thus far, it is known how spiders are able to detect their prey at this height. SP-1506-1's preferred method of predation is to spin a web to the ground from, from altitude. Any animalia touching the spider web will instantly adhere and be unable to remove the web. Only live animal matter exhibits this effect. When enough food has been caught, SP-1506-1 will reel in the web at redacted kilometers per hour. When SCP-1506-1 ha has fully reeled in its prey, the web structure will engulf the animal. Consumption of the prey takes place over days, dependent on both the size of the prey and the colony. Humans take approximately 5 days for an average sized colony to digest. The largest single prey animal recorded has been an elk taking 11 days to digest. Waste is allowed to fall freely, leaving a disassociated husk that will often shatter on impact. SCP-1506-1 was first identified as SCP-1506 before the realization of multiple instances. SCP-1506-1 was first brought to the Foundation's attention on a redacted. When a viral video thought to originate in Chile showed a man walking through the streets of redacted at 0247 local time, According to the timestamps, for two minutes he is tracked by eight security cameras 
footage of which has been seamlessly edited together until he suddenly stops walking. Whilst looking very startled, the subject of the video begins brushing at his arms and face before vanishing. High-speed analysis shows that he has been dragged vertically out of frame. The poor resolution of security footage has made it impossible to determine the actual speed, but redacted kilometers per hour is within estimations. The footage has been doctored to remove th the three frames and has been publicly revealed to be part of a viral campaign for a redacted energy drink. SCP-1506-1-14 is a colony captured on redacted. Cameras placed on prey animals have shown the internal structure to be incredibly complex. The colony is divided into living chambers and buoyancy chambers with no genus of spider noticeably more active in web maintenance. Every foreign spider introduced to the colony has been adopted, uh, has, not adopted, has been accepted without incident. Introducing new spider species to SP-1506-1-S14 is now banned. 200 different spiders from around the world have been introduced to the colony and it is believed there is no more data to be gained from this research. SP-1506-1-S14 is, is being studied to determine longevity of the colony. So far, the colony remains healthy in a stimulated high-altitude environment, feeding when necessary. Using remote cameras to explore a structure has proven a failure as all attempts have been thrown immobilized by web and excreted in the usual manner. Spider-mounted cameras have failed in some manner. The only successful method to obtain internal visuals is through prey-mounted camera, which allows for only for stationary video feeds. Tests indicate a normal oxygen level and atmospheric pressure within living chambers. Little headway has been made as to as the mode of transmission of SP-1506, but the most favored theory is communication of learned behavior. Investigation is ongoing into how the spiders communicate. Research on Malos gregalis and other social spiders have been promising, but so far no headway has been made. So far, SP-1506-1 has appeared on all continents except Antarctica and shows no preference for a member spider species, either solitary or social. There you go. So considering Spood is literally just a goofy way of saying spider, I think it's pretty obvious where this goes. Okay. I mean, it's not trying to target humans, it's just getting food. Yeah, they're just they're just spiders that are, you know, having their little spider utopian doing their little spider things. That was kind of weird, creepy that there's one nest in every country. Well, not A one continent. nest in every country, but like they've been noted to exist on every continent. Yeah. That's what it was said. Oh, yeah, uh, I imagine Adorna will agree with this assessment, but I say Spood here. It's the most appropriate decision in my mind. Adorna says Spood. Uh, all right, let's right, put in Spood. Do you know if Jiri's going to be showing up at some point? I don't know. I have a feeling Jerry would have loved this one. Next SCP. There we go. SP fifteen twelve. 
SCP-1512 is a fruit-like organic structure with an estimated mass in excess of 80,000 metric tons at present. It consists of a dense and knotted network of long branches or tendrils. Each tendril is several hundred meters in length, with additional branches every few meters, and coil or zigzag in various directions with no discernible pattern. Tendrils have a diameter ranging from 3 to 5 centimeters. Their outer surface is reddish brown in color with hairless molted skin. The tendrils secrete a corrosive, foul smelling gray, thick, zootropic slime that is capable of causing chemical burns on flesh. Additionally, humans who are exposed to the slime experience altered brain chemistry, which manifests as feelings of disorientation and vertigo. The tendrils su subtly pulsate as if by means of internal circulation or respiration, but do not otherwise move except for growing in length, disturbing branches in the performance of the containment protocol. SCP-1512 radiates heat as if it were a similarly sized mammal with a high rate of metabolism and produces loud sound tones that are perceived as brown noise. But what the fuck is brown noise? I have no fucking clue. Hold well, on, before we continue, let's find out what the fuck brown noise is. I'll look at it. Oh, you got it? Okay. Go. I um, swear, it has something to do with shit. Why would it have... Because I think South Park made it a joke about brown noise being something to do with, with, with a note that makes people shit. I think that was an episode. Highly doubt it. Brown noise. Brown noise, also called red noise, has higher energy or lower frequencies. This makes it deeper than pink and white noise. Examples of brown noise include low roaring. Is what healthline.com says. So is it loud? Uh All right. Like white noise can be loud or quiet like right. it's just a type of noise that doesn't speak to its volume right all right anyway the point of origin of sp-1512 is located on the campus of redacted university site oh, once no. oh yeah <laughs> uh, no not redacted university oh god <laughs> scp-166 has Oh, no, not SCP. Site-166 has been constructed around SCP-1512 to contain and study it. The tendrils animate from a specific point of origin, the position of which was formerly the location of the point of within Unit 38A of the university's graduate student housing. That dormitory unit has been occupied by Niels Meyer, a PhD candidate in mathematics at the university. Meyer's remains were recovered from the location, and forensic analysis suggests that the point of origin was within Meyer's cerebrum. A notebook recovered from the dormitory unit suggests that Meyer has been studying a hyperbolic non-Euclidean geometric problem when the structure came into being. The containment protocol was developed by Foundation researchers after analyzing, analyzing, analyzing the notebook before the containment protocol was instituted. The structure's growth resulted in Meyer's death and significant structural damage to the dormitory building. Despite SP-1512's apparent organic composition, it, is, it has an unmeasurably high Vic, Vickers hardness and has proven immune to damage by cutting, burning, lasers, corrosive acids, and similar substances in other means. During breaches and the performance of the containment protocol, various tendrils of SP-1512... Again, SP right. Don't take South Park seriously. It is not a reliable source. Shut, shut up, Moderna. What did Moderna say? Don't take uh, South Park seriously. It's not a reliable source. Oh. Yeah, that's fair. 
Yeah. Why you would ever take anything from South Park seriously is beyond me. <laughs> anyway, various tendrils of SB1512 increase in length. The growth rate of tendrils appear appears to accelerate for the duration of any suspicion of performance of the protocol and has been measured at rates to, of up to 8 meters per second. The source of additional mass is as yet unknown. When gr growing, the tendrils are capable of displacing or breaking solid obstructions, including concrete and naval grade steel plate. The original dormitory building has been destroyed by SB-1512's growth to date. It is not clear whether SP uh, site one six six will will be sufficient to contain any further growth of SP fifteen twelve despite reinforcement of the walls, ceiling, and floor. Due to the size and potential growth rate of the structure and the catastrophic environmental damage that could result from the slime animations, maintenance of the containment protocol have been classified as a level A priority. And there you go. Oh, Wait, I want to I want to read the footnotes because this is funny. Okay, this is the foundation's special duty office is tasked with recruiting members of MTF Omega Eight who are capable of both complex mathematics and the procedure of the maintaining a requisite level of cognitive dissonance. To date, most members of the task force have been recruited from the Society of Jesus. Or from Zen Buddhist institutions. Cognitive dissonance. Right. Is how that's pronounced. Okay. And that's pretty funny. Yeah, yeah to use Society of Jesus and Zen Buddhists. <laughs> uh, I feel like Zen Buddhists would be a less reliable source. Uh, do, you, do you know what cognitive dissonance is? No. Uh, it is a psychological phenomenon in which a person believes two contradictory things at the same time. So uh, uh, so think think Jehovah's Witnesses who are boomers and have lived through like three end of the world uh, dates from the towers or the Watchtower Society uh, that haven't come to pass but they still believe in Jehovah's Witnesses uh, stuff. That is the bare bones basics of cognitive dissonance. Right. So this tree can't be stopped. Honestly, I barely understood anything that was being said. The tree just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Forever growing. It's basically like pipe nightmare, but worse. Like it's faster. Let's see. In which case, uh, probably XK. Yeah. That's fair. What does the Derna think? Everyone has a <laughs> vote. What? <laughs> What does Adorna think? Immediately leaves the room. <laughs> Wait, they they left? <laughs> yeah, Adorna left and then came back. Oh. What does Adorna think? Boom. Wait, as you see stream planning, Nerdy Dragon just sent Never Sleeping Bright. What? What? <laughs> they just sent that in chat. What does that mean? What the... What the fuck? I don't know. But anyway, about the tree SCP, do you agree? I said it would be XK. Yeah. If it just keeps growing and growing and growing. It could eventually grow all over the earth, and then we're all just stuck with this giant, loud-ass, brown noise tree. I'm actually kind of surprised Pipe Nightmare is not a Keter. Maybe because it's a bit easier to contain. Probably, yeah. Did Farming. they mention? Did they mention containment procedures like how how the tree is kept in in under control? 
I don't think they, I think they, like, said that it couldn't be kept under control. Oh. They just literally can't do anything. Yeah, because it, it keeps breaking through their walls and shit. They have to keep replacing it. Have they considered a nuke? Let's see, I'll tell you what they have used on it. They cut it, burned it, lasers, Why isn't it Keter, corrosive then? acids, and and similar substances. Right, yeah, it has super high vectors. Have they have they tried diamond saws yet? I don't know. Oh, well, either way, I think. Yeah, I think here. XK is an appropriate yeah. designation. Yeah. Do you agree, attorney? Oh, the next one's going to be very interesting. Derny agrees. XK. Alright. On to the next SCP, then. The council has spoken. <laughs> right. SCP-1514 is a nuclear deterrent system developed by Redacted in association with the United States government in 1983. It's developed... Oh, it's Reagan. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> this is this this is Reagan's Star Wars program. No. No. <laughs> oh god. What did Reagan do? Can they come on? We do have a Star Wars program. Have you forgotten Project Helios? Well, yeah, Project Helios, but it's not the same as Star Wars program. <laughs> the Star Wars program was the idea to basically use the Project Helios idea to laser nukes out of the sky <laughs> now we just have a laser weapon <laughs> yeah now, now now trump signed off on the laser weapon <laughs> we have a death star <laughs> i had to choke anyway let's go ahead and hear yeah. about reagan's star wars program all right its development and deployment was disguised by the publicly announced Strategic Defense Initiative, disparagingly known as Star Wars. Yep. yep. <laughs> it was. <laughs> you actually guessed it. Well, yeah, it's a nuclear defense thing that happened in 1983. That's Reagan era. It's nuclear defense. It's going to be the Star Wars program. Fucking Reagan. Anyway, go ahead. Fucking Reagan. Hold on, we might get cheery now. Oh, how I long to piss on that man's grave. I just sent them join us, Reagan SCP. <laughs> <laughs> Join us with Reagan SCP. Why would they join after that? <laughs> Jerry's a gay man. Hey, Jerry. Oh, I guess it works. <laughs> join us, Reagan SCP. <laughs> what the fuck is wrong with you? We're doing the SCP Keter tier list, Jerry. That's what it sounded like. When I finally got upstairs and saw your message. Yeah. All right. So. Okay. Uh, just restart. It's, yeah, I'm it's, gonna it's, restart. It's Reagan's Star Wars program. Yeah. Hold on. Here we go. SCP-1514 is a nuclear deterrent system developed by Redacted in association with the United States government in 1983. Its development and deployment was disguised at the publicly announced Strategic Defense Initiative, disparagingly known as Star Wars, which was put forth by the President Ronald Reagan during the same year. 
Officially, SCP-1514 is known as SDI Redacted System, XYE, and numerous components of it were developed by legitimate SDI research and development groups. Known records indicate that their system was functional from redacted to redacted, at which point the artifacts malfunctions and subsequent investigation by the Unusual Incidents Unit Federal Bureau of Investigation brought SB-1514 to the Foundation's attention. SB-1514-1A is a 1.5 meters by 0.9 meters by 0.6 meters device comprised mainly of steel. Various instruments along its exterior display the homeostatic state of an entity currently residing inside the device. SCP-1514-1A is powered by an unknown internal source and contains what is believed to be a sophisticated life support system, utilizing an unidentified dark red liquid. Due to the inherent risk of tampering with the device, details regarding SCP-1514-1B and the life support system are unclear or speculative. The remaining instruments belong to an interface system designated to input and receive data from SP-1514-1B. Information on SP-1514-2 is limited and thus far only has provided by documentation received from the U UIU, redacted and redacted. However, it is confirmed that SP-1514-2 are a series of protected satellites currently in orbit around Earth. Superficially, they resembled the redacted satellite, with that is believed to be an array of 12 tactical X-ray laser devices attached to the anterior side. The solar panels visible on SP-1514-2 instances are reported to be fake as the satellite's propulsion and weapon systems are powered by an alternative anomalous source. The sign speculations indicate the Zazer system was originally to be utilized for disabling intercontinental ballistic missiles through target targeting algorithms do exist for ground-based targets. SCP-1514-1A generates an anomalous radio transmission transmission once every hour broadcasting to the nearest SB-1514-2 instance. This transmission cannot be deterred or disrupted through any known method, including Faraday cage structures. According to documentation provided by Redacted, failure to receive this signal for a period lasting longer than 36 hours constitutes the immediate and an autonomous implication of the coordinate contingency. Contingency, causing all SCP-1514-2 instances to fire upon their preset land-based targets due to the scope of the coordinate contingency, which was engineered by Redacted and is far more extensive than it has, was intended by the U.S. government. This event has been deemed a probable XK class end of the world scenario. Information from Redacted has indicated that several components of SB-1514 were developed by Redacted through CIA Project Redacted between Redacted and Redacted, though it is unknown what the original purpose of the components were. There you go. So it's Reagan's Star Wars program, except it went off script and started firing Text to speech doesn't allow mention of the dingus press. Is what it sounds like. <laughs> Apparently, you can't put the president's name in the text of speech. Wait, seriously? That's what Adurna said. Damn. <laughs> so, Jerry, aren't you oh. glad you came in and heard of Ronald Reagan SCP? I feel things. <laughs> I'm right. not sure if it's glad, but it's things. See, here's the thing, Jira. We actually do have something like this in real life. I think you've mentioned it at least upwards of 20 times. I don't think I ever told Jiri, have I? Told me what? 
about Project Helios? I don't know. I don't really care. It's a satellite that takes the, uh, the solar light of the sun and fires it to Earth. I already know about that. <laughs> <clears throat> we technically have the technology to terraform our own planet if we want. <laughs> But yeah, so point point being, uh, Reagan made, uh, Reagan made, uh, haywire death lasers, and knowing Reagan, he probably intends to aim it at gay. Oh. Yes, <laughs> I tried to say that I agreed with pissing on his GRAVE. But this is the SCP Foundation, so I guess Ronald Reagan gets his own death lasers. Exactly, and he's gonna. Do exactly what you expect Ronald Reagan to do. Right. I am so glad that in the real world, the only person who made it was Tesla. And he was like, you know what? This is a bad idea and destroyed it. Yeah. So here's the thing. Uh, during a Texas speech, the reason why Ronald Reagan thing wouldn't work is because they wanted to uh, do Texas speech of them pissing on Ronald Reagan's grave. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, anyway, um, uh, this is um, this is a fat XK, because it literally said it could cause an XK. Yeah. Uh, this is also a fat dookie on Reagan's grave. Both. Oh, yeah, Jerry, you missed it. We, uh, we put particular SCP and spooked here that is various colonies of amorphous or anomalous spiders in flying you, web but you put anomalous spiders in spooked here the reason why they don't intentionally attack humans it's just whatever preys near them which yeah, it's a, it's spiders did you put in there there's a the bunch ones of that's SCPs. in the sky they're sky spiders? Yeah, they're sky yeah, spiders. Yeah. Well, no, the, the spiders that are in the SCP is, like, a completely random assortment of spiders. Yeah, they're, like... like the, these colonies the of complex <laughs> flying webs that these spiders pilot uh, have a whole bunch of different types of spiders in them that work together to pilot web web colonies through the stratosphere and occasionally uh, send down a big-ass line of web to catch animals and sometimes people, unfortunately, and then they eat them and then jettison them from their little web, web ships. And we put it in spook here. That included people. Yeah, it, I think it's, like, rare that it, that it goes out the It's just, like, whatever... Goes yeah, near it's, its web. They don't try to get people. It's just yeah. well, I'm gonna point out there are so many people that they should probably be catching people more often. <laughs> even if they're trying not to. Well tr that's true, but on the other hand, it's a cool ass flying spider web. So I thought Spood Tier was appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> Spiders that catch things and eat it and work as a colony as a weird co that does the spiders belong in spoon tier yes yes the spiders and spiders it's just an unfortunate thing that they occasionally end up nomming on humans yes in the we'll same way that it's in, in the same way that it's an unfortunate thing that poor innocent uh brazilian wandering spiders end up being transported across colony or across countries and then freaking out and then biting someone and then but and then said person probably dies with a boner assuming they have it i need to stop the, the brazilian spider being shipped off is more of a tragedy than Oh man, I am really not very like kind to people, am I? No. 
<laughs> Let me just shut up before I sound more like I'm fine with murdering people to save spiders. Well, no, the, the point being that you can't blame the spider for well, biting yeah. someone. He's, he's just doing his thing and he gets scared and then he bites and it just so happens that his bite makes people die from an erection. <laughs> <laughs> I will never not love that fact. <laughs> Would you and... like to die with a heart on? <laughs> we'll be in pain and with a heart on. What, what the <laughs> fuck? <laughs> Sorry. I wasn't going. expecting that. But anyway, next SCP. SCP-1518 is a 1.1 meter by 1.8 meter by 1.1 meter non-functional limestone fountain. It does not appear to possess any power source or external operational controls. The foundation is filled with a liquid superficially resembling water. This liquid does not evaporate and appears to be ir irremovable from this artifact. It is unknown what mechanism holds the substance in place, but it does not spill if the fountain is disturbed or even inverted. Any solid or liquid matter exposed to the, to the liquid will instantly sublimate or evaporate respectively. SCP-1518 sporadically re releases bubbles of variable sizes. sizes. SCP-1518-1 behave largely identical to non-anomalous non bubbles but have not been observed to rupture in any circumstances. After a mission, SCP-1518 18-1 will slowly float away from SCP-1518 until they come into contact with solid or liquid matter. No adverse effects have been observed from SCP-1518-1's interaction with gaseous matter. SCP-1518-1 have a mutually destructive reaction with solid matter. The exposed bubble will reduce in size until it ceases to exist and destroy any amount of solid matter equal to the volume lost. No trace of the bubble or destroyed matter remains. SCP-1518-1 will assimilate all liquid matter they are exposed to and increase in size by the amount equal to the volume of the matter assimilated. Due to this exposure to rain or atmosphere with the significant humidity or typically is typically disastrous. Additionally, the high liquid content of living Biological matter generally results in the death of exposed organisms. Presently, it is believed that the contact of even one bubble with an oceanic body of water is likely to induce an XK class end of the world scenario. SCP-1518 was discovered and redacted. Bonsnia and and redacted. The area in question was presently involved in success systematic ethnic cleansing due to the ongoing Bosnia Bosnian Civil War. A cleansing event causing redacted fatalities had occurred only 10 days prior to initial rumors regarding this artifact. The primary informant was redacted, a member of Death Squad hired to carry out said cleansing event. The other 14 members of the squad were killed by anomalous behavior associated with SCP-1518. Shortly after an artifact was retrieved, light rain occurred in the area, causing significant damage and killing the recovery team. The second team was successful in retrieval, and the artifact was transferred to Site 117. Redacted com committed auto homicide shortly after his, his initial contact with the fountain, though his personal effects were recovered, among which was a journal. Alright, that's the SCP. So, I mean, if you want to hear the journal, that is, but it's a lot, all the, all the dates are redacted, so I'm not going to say the dates. That's I would like funny. to hear the journal of the no-no water. All right. <laughs> redacted day one. Received a message from redacted today, requesting our services in redacted. I knew that this, that the place had a severe infestation and was honestly surprised. We did not hear from there sooner he he even offered accommodations for a few nights the others cried in joy when i told them a bed alone was uncommon a full room with food alcohol and a bathroom was a miracle redacted day two 
arrival was simple. Bernacted greeted us and took us to his estate, a beautiful place with many things crafted out of marble, granite, sandstone. He treated us to lunch and told us where to find the problem areas. He had a little place set up on his balcony with binoculars and a telescope. Apparently he wanted us to watch tomorrow. Redacted Day 3 Preliminary sterilization without incident. Males were clean, females and minors head to the first floor of the state. Do not know why the others kept the minors too. Normally they would be clean with the males. Redacted gave no co complaint. He seems to be enjoying everything. Redacted Day 3 Sterilization is not a point of joy or satis satisfaction. It is a job, a duty. I am not deaf to the world. We are monsters, murderers of innocent families and children. The world feigns to care. It did not limit no suffering in my country until we killed them. It did not limit my wife when she died or my children when they died. I do not humor the world in its righteousness. The others are not like me. They laugh and jeer. They take prizes in flesh. Today they took their prize from not only the females, but the... Not for saying that! Holy fuck! When they were alone, they threw the... Not... Okay! I'm not reading the rest of that journal entry. No. No. It's, just no. It's a journal... It's a journal entry that's pertaining to a literal act of uh, extra ultra, ultra homicide, we'll say, to get around Twitch. Well, I will say that if the journal is like that, it's no wonder he hated all of them. And it didn't get any better. It got worse. It got worse. Yeah, from is the there a way you can summarize it without detailing anything? Well, uh, let's just say the rain hit the fountain when they were going to do it a second time. The bubbles formed. Good. <laughs> so basically... Do this the is... bad stuff, get the no-no water. So all of the, this, this thing that could quite possibly cause the end the world was created because a bunch of fascist dickheads were yeah. being fascist dickheads. Wait. The fountain the, the fountain has a song. Oh uh, well, I'm not I'm not gonna sing it. I I'll say it what? though. I, I don't sing. Bright sing the song. You can sing No, I'm not doing it. But I'll say it what it is. Come catch the bubbles, so many, so many. Do not let them pop. The bubble is your life. Is that you, mother, father? Do not cry, do not cry. Is that you, sister, brother? Is it not beautiful? Now the bubbles fall down, 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 down. Cannot stop the bubbles popping, popping. Come catch the bubbles. See the mother, father? We are the bubbles. See us pop and die. Uh, uh. That is very disturbing. Uh. <laughs> That's my commentary on that song. Hatchet, what about you? I like potato chips. <laughs> That's also valid. My commentary was, so this... uh, and yours was, you like potato chips. Oh uh, yeah, Hatchet, uh, with the SCP, they didn't just do homicide with the minors. That's why I, I refuse to speak it. Yeah, I, I, I picked up on it. I, <laughs> I am vaguely aware of what tends to happen during <laughs> mega ultra homicide events throughout history relating I to fascists. Like, I started reading, I was like, oh, what's this? I was like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> very, very not Twitch friendly. Yeah. <laughs> or YouTube friendly. Or events. anything. One line from that song is, what, they're, what are they good for? Absolutely nothing. Yeah, oh. yeah this so SCP being, is just fucked. Yeah, so point being, the fascists made a fountain that's angry and will quite possibly cause the end of the world. I think it sounds like a fountain made from 
the life force of the innocents murdered during wartime. Well, yeah, but the the people who basically ended up making it the same. Yeah. And they then... caused they caused the creation of the anti water fountain that will destroy the oceans. Which yeah. I take personal offense to because the ocean has fish in it. <laughs> so, hey, the ocean also has sea snakes and other things. <laughs> true, true. But there's more fish than there are sea snakes. I snake at you. I, I she snake at you. I'm more a eel at you. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so where would you put this? Like XK. X I mean. Yeah. It, it, it literally said that it could cause an XK scenario. If it was put near an ocean. Said, but who would put that near an ocean? Well, technically, it doesn't need to be near an ocean, just en near enough idiots. Yeah. And you can never or D -class. kill the sins of a person. So you can't exactly put any just any guard around even if you think they're clean the bubbles might get them because they might not be as clean as they say <laughs> sorry 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 I, I don't think jerry heard me when they said like don't let idiots near i said i immediately after or let the d-class near them <laughs> don't let anyone near them <laughs> Just don't let anyone near them, because like I said, well, like I sang, sorry, you don't know who's going to be the bad guy. There are and people even... who have clean records who are horrible people who have done horrible things. Take, why, why don't you go ahead and take a look at most police in America? Yeah. That's fair. There are many politicians who have very squeaky clean so don't let uh, right near them files but have also paid and practically forced minors into situations that they did not want so in other in other words the the, the exact thing i was going to say our politicians have had very squeaky clean records but they still would have been found in Epstein's black black book also i want to say they would have been found in the bubbles the what Adernus? Yeah, what Adernus said, I can totally see happening as canon. Is Doctor Bright actually going in there? <laughs> yeah, that tracks. <laughs> Doctor Bright yeah. wants to. Doctor Bright wants to unalivent, so that makes sense. Question: Would Bright be killed by the fountain or not? Well, Bright's body would. Yeah, the amulet would be fine. But the amulet oh, would the, be fine. The, that's fair. The body would it be? Would it be well, taken down? Well, actually, then again, technically, like those bubbles when they impact, uh, like physical matter, can just, like they they destroy the matter in an equivalent to, uh, the volume of the bubbles. So does that mean that if a bubble hit the amulet, it could just destroy the amulet? Doubtful. And thus, just, and thus destroy the bright? More powerful things than these bubbles have hit the amulet and did nothing. True. I think the only thing that can truly damage it is the spear of the non-believer. The edgy anti-theist spear. Yeah. <laughs> ah. <laughs> I never, I never fair. put it, I never put it like that in my head, but that's really funny. Well, it's technically not wrong. It acknowledges gods exist, but it's like, f you gives it the middle finger. <laughs> and, and, and stories you you hear about it like literally wanting to murder anything godlike or that thinks it's a god. Gods so feel uncomfortable around it. Though maybe it's less, maybe it's less uh, anti-theist and more misotheist. Then, guess so. Misotheist. Misotheist means hatred towards the gods or God. That actually sounds about right. 
it is it is very nice to owe theists. Yeah, it is a category of theist who despises the god or gods. Anyway, are we ready for the next SCP? Maybe. Yeah. Does this one have a little less ultra mega ultra homicide? I've looked at it, it does not have that at all. Don't worry. Okay, okay. nice. It's still Keter, though. Well, yeah, but it, at least there's a little Maybe? less... Maybe? Let's go. Ethnic... Eh, ethnic cleansing. Right, less, anyway. Less, less ethnic cleansing, less bad no-no things. Yeah. Less creepy song. Mm-hmm. All right, next preferably, is... preferably more potato chips and or fish. Oh my gosh. Anyway, next SCP. SCP-1527 is a remote settlement and redacted. Upon discovery, it was devoid of human life, but bearing signs of recent habitation. The The agriculture of SCP-1527 consists mainly of an unidentified and currently indestructible white stone. Artifacts recovered from the settlement are consistent with those of human design, but feature several unknown and presently indecipherable languages. SCP-1527 is believed to have been inhabited by individuals operating for or affiliated with the Serpent's Hand. SCP-1527-1 is a church or temple at the approximate center of the settlement, the architecture and artifacts of the building appear to be associated with several distinct religious bodies or practices. A clock tower rises from the structure's southern facing wall and contains a metallic bell of unknown composition. The bell and its peripheral architecture are likewise indestructible. Once every 24 hours, the bell inside SB 1527 1 will autonomously toll a variable number of times. All efforts at impeding this event have failed. After this, has ceased, a variable number of entities designated SCP-1527-A will manifest inside SCP-1527. SCP-1527-A resemble crustaceans bearing an armored carapace, segmented limbs, and no ident identifiable head. They are both slightly translucent and luminescent, producing a variable color sheen. The entities possess an an average size of roughly 1.5 meters by 2.7 meters by 2.9 meters, typically with four to five limbs. SCP-1527-A have been observed to spontaneously produce additional and fully functional appendages, including wings, clawed hands and arms, and several orifices of unidentified purpose, though observations suggest usage in feeding. SCP-1527-A possesses some telepathic capability and are capable of, of inducing suggestibility, confusion, and compulsion in sapient targets at an approximate range of 50 meters. Due to prior tests with Redacted, it has been discovered that this telepathy is vulnerable to disruption from radio interference. After implementation of these protocols, incidents due to telepathic properties have been reduced by 78%. SCP-1527-A will attempt to breach Stone 245 through all available means and do not demonstrate protective instincts or incentives in regards to, to fellow SCP-1527-A, while their exact intelligence level is unclear. They are to be considered adaptive hostiles due to previous observed maneuvers utilized against personnel. The carapaces of SCP-1527-A are resilient but not impregnable against conventional weaponry and that's it and and be crack the crab people yep like are they i don't know where you put these is there anything extra on them? Anything? No, let me see if I can find anything that doesn't say what it has. Alright, there's two things they've said. 
uh, to uh, people's minds and foundation. Alright, the first one is short, the other is long. Alright, first one. Watching, waiting, defending. Not the shells. The shells are just... Just eyes, 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 eyes. Are supposed to see, not eat, not eat. That's it of the first one. Oh, that, um... Something. Second one. I can see you coming, but I doubt you'll get through the stores for hours, and I'll be <laughs> long gone before that happens. If Not I interesting. Can see you coming. Oh wait, no, this is from a serpent's hand member. Okay. I can I see you coming. Shush. Not interested in becoming another pet of yours, but there's still some good you can do. All creators with a mortal mind need a sense of curiosity, and for that they need something to inspire them. Our bellmaker drew upon all the worlds at the expense of chaos as his inspiration. When his bell tolled, the skies above our town gave way to fantastic places even we could scarcely understand. The bell would toll twelve times a day, each toll would open passages to different places. Even those that did not travel the pathways to the bell could look upon the places and visions of the sky. And bask in their majesty. The hand, as you know them, sought the aid of the bellmakers to reach places even they could not reach. He agreed naturally. He closed his pathways to no one. They told me of you when they came. They told me that you would lock him in his bellway, close the passage to us. I cannot let such a thing happen. I joined them to protect the places in the sky. But it appears now there's no other option. So long our bellmaker drew upon inspiration in the sky, but he was ever curious, ever searching for inspiration yet untapped. Eventually he came upon the edge worlds. Of course he could not help, but he enthralled. Redacted, redacted, you know them by different names of course, but you also know exactly what, why my pen quivers simply from writing about those places. I do not know what happened to him out there, but I knew what he sought when he turned. Emotions as wide and varied as the universe, but those of us have seen as much of the universe as we have known, which is the most powerful of all. Fear. Abstract and uncomprehending terror. That is what he had seen, and he had become dependent on it for inspiration. He began to bring in things he had seen out there, and the terror of the people in our town became his inspiration. So he banished him to the very worlds he, he had become so attached to, and it pained us to see him depart as twisted as become. However, he, even as we grieved his loss, the bell tolled once again, and once again sublime terror arose on our doorstep. From the edge of worlds, the bellmaker still commanded the power of the bell, and he made it toll every night. We could not destroy the bell, or even the tower itself. We do not know what he did, but he must have foreseen his banishment and prepared the bell for our inevitable attempt to destroy it. So we did all we can do to stop the things that came, the opal shells, we call them, and mundane monstrosity, but still formidable on their own right. We should consider, consider ourselves lucky it was just them. We do not know why the bellmaker brought only those creatures from the edge worlds. Given what lies out there, but we can hope that he simply cannot create passages that can bear them. We had everyone evacuate the town. My friends will take care of them. I opted to remain behind to ensure that, that you got here and were informed. Everything is said, and now, jailers, it is time for you to do what you do best. Redacted. That's it. Right. Yeah? Did you make a cold bell? No. This is the serpent's hand. I think you made a cold bell, and you haven't told us about Please. it. Okay. The serpent's Sounding hand like WTF did, did class not to me. create the bell. They just asked for passage. Well, yes, the serpent's hand did not create the bell, but Bright did. What? I assume that Bright created the best. What is my basis? Um, 
Just trust me. <laughs> oh my gosh. Shut the fuck up, Hatchet. I don't create something that, like that. Only chainsaw stuff. <laughs> okay, where the fuck do we put this? Fuel. An untapped nightmare fuel potential, but right now it's just untapped as in it could be dangerous, but so far it sounds like it's just stayed to one town and it's just scared people. Yeah, and isn't that, didn't it say that that town was like literally floating in the ocean? I think it was like, yeah. Direct, uh, yeah. So, like, I feel like it belongs in Spood tier until something happens. I was thinking certain groups because, like, the people in that town aren't having a good time. No. Well, yeah, but they're also not dead. Well, yeah, but. They're still being harmed by its effects. Like somewhat like being affected by the SCP can still make it go into certain groups. Like it doesn't necessarily mean that it's killing people. Like earlier we put uh we put some throws that go around shitting on everything and spreading a weird version of the bird flu and corroding metals in continent because like they're not going to cause a severe amount they could cause a severe amount of death but ultimately they're going to primarily just act as a massive hindrance to the majority of people See, depending on the bird flu that really could create massive death anyway. they said influenza oh. well yes yeah, ah. bird flu it, it said avian influenza which is bird flu. But point point being, uh, we don't. It doesn't necessarily need to be killing people. I still think WTF tier considered in one of these categories. Darren says they still believe WTF tier. Wait, what'd you say? The Darren says they believe for SSP WTF tier. Wait, where did they say that? They they didn't from text to speech. Oh, okay. Well, damn it! I can't I can't hear what's being said in text to speech. Make it clear that it's text. That's why I said it. <laughs> yeah, you said it, but you didn't say it was text to speech. So I started looking around trying to verify what you were saying. <laughs> anyway, I think that is a I. Yeah, I think that's a fair designation. And yeah, Jerry, earlier today we decided to add a what the fuck tier for when we just don't know. Yeah, because there was the this one SCP do. that it's literally just kept changing its article. <laughs> yeah, it literally, like, all we knew was that it's kind of dangerous, but it's just like we have literally no information. Yeah, and, and it, like, in its last description, it said it's coming for you. Pray <laughs> and run. <laughs> Let's see. It said to, uh, it, it it altered the protocols to make it say that you should. What was it? You should aim a gun at your head, pull the trigger three times, and then uh, aim the gun away from your head, load a bullet, and then aim the gun at the entity, and then yeah. fire the gun at the entity. <laughs> like, yeah. it's, it's some real weird shit. Anyway, I'm gonna put it in your mission. I'm gonna take a piss. How dare you. Have a nice pee. <laughs> Thank you. Welcome All back, right. back, back, back again, again. So, yeah, we decided to put it in, in what the fuck tier, so I, I guess we go to the next SCP. Which is a lot shorter. Right. SCP. SCP. Oh. Huh? What? I was going to say something stupid and then I immediately forgot what I was going to say. Okay. <laughs> anyway. SCP-1534 refers to an organization that, that operated primarily out of the local supercenter number 2351 at Branch Store 
belonging to Redacted Inc. in Catskill, New York. This cult, dubbed SM, SISM, by its practitioners, was disguised as a department within the store and reported directly to store manager Jeremy Wilcox. Now designated POI-1534-1. The initial A. Wait, what was? Wait, what was his name? Jeremy Wilcox. Wilcox. Okay. It's. <laughs> at first, I thought you said Jeremy Littlecox. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> it's like which motherfucker in that guy's family tree decided to be a dickhead? <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Go ahead. Really. Didn't work. Darna. Anyway, the initial aim of the SFS ISITS was to utilize thaumaturgic practices in order to boost economic growth in the region, but this goal was eventually co-opted by POI-1534-1 in order to ensure its sole economic benefit. Membership was limited to the select current and former employees at Supercenter number 2351 and its sister store, Supercenter 2402 in Hudson, New York. At the time of Incident SP, uh, Incident 1534, Inc. 01, there was rumors that POI-1534-1 planned to extend its influence to Supercenter 1840 and Lake Catcher in New York, but these rumors remain uh, uh, so satiated. The cult Stinch. itself, yeah, the cult itself disguised uh. as an independent department within both stores, both of which engage in various thaumaturgic rituals designated to increase sales and profitability within the stores 2351 and 2402. The extent at which these rituals influence the market increase in sales in these two stores is unclear, but it's obvious that the effect was tremendous. Unsubstantiated. No, right. You're going to lose subs. What do you mean? It's unsubstantiated. Fuck off. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that's what it is. Also, before we decide anything, um, apparently the MTF assigned to it is called MU MU-5, aka Secret <laughs> Shoppers. <laughs> Secret Shoppers. <Nice. laughs> okay, so it's just oh it's it's just a cult. That started that started in a Walmart. Yep. <laughs> Where do we put the Walmart cult? Have they done anything that's dangerous? Um Juicy information. Driving the garbage trucks. Plus stop snipers. Get air bright. I'm looking. Sounds like WTF or Spood tier to me. You know what this this actually feels pretty accurate. I'm currently I'm currently doing a mission to sell my Bezos bucks that I've manufactured. And the way that I'm delivering all of the Bezos bucks is is in garbage trucks. Wait. The most I'm looking through the posts to see if they do anything dangerous. One was like the first one that says uh they did some sort of Blood spat splatter. They don't say where it's from. 
they did some sort of blood splatter. So who knows where the blood came from? I mean, they created symbols. I would probably call it symbols. But the latest one is just, I just find it funny. Alright. Peak came to us. Peak has crested like a wave. None of us are now as we were. Wilcox is pleased. Charles provides. 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 None of us are now as we were. Hmm. Wilcox. All right. So here's here's the last bit of information I can probably give that might help. All right, this is between Murphy and Wilcox, and the first one's going to be Murphy. It had to be done. That's right, son. There was no other way. The cleaner, the packer. They gave their lives for the cause, son. Their sacrifices allowed the rest of the congregation to flourish in a new store, and you and I will lead them. I need to make some preparations, Father Wilcox. We'll make a quick stop by your apartment. Before we do, I need to ask you something. Father, do you trust me? Of course, Father. Charles provides. Charles does indeed provide. Now let's save money and live better. Uh. Just, it's just a retail store cult. Well, so, so some people have died. This is so weird. More dangerous than the bell, even though the bell sounded more dangerous. <laughs> so, Hatchet, you just something released. It sounds so weird. Yeah, it's an SCP. Of course, it's gonna be weird. <laughs> well, yeah, but this is just like, <laughs> like it's not weird in the normal way SCPs <laughs> tend to be weird. It's just, it's just, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a fucking retail cold. Like, how do? How is my brain supposed to process this information? It's a cult of people who work at a Walmart. Like WTF to your spoon. Yeah, Aderna said either what the fuck tier or spoon tier. I um, think it's not harmless enough for spoon tier. Yeah, because there's they they they're 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 doing dangerous stuff. Yeah. So I I I'd say what the fuck tier. Why does this exist? <laughs> we need another tier. Why does this exist? <laughs> On the picture it also gave me to use from the actual article. It's just a woman shopping but with a lampshade on her head. <laughs> I see. <laughs> I, I I see they have ceremonial garb. <laughs> the, the retail cult. As you all know, during ritual, you must wear the lampshade of all-knowing power. Other than the lampshade of all-knowing, it's the lampshade of great deals. <laughs> the lampshade of coupon. <laughs> Yeah, the lampshade lamp of coupon. Didn't we put stuff that could bargain. be world or reality ending in spoot tier once, though? It's just a lampshade that was pulled off of an old dingy lamp that got put in the bargain bin. Okay, so the next SCP I'm already going to see is probably going to be extremely dangerous. Is it Dr. Bright? No. Also, I can already tell I'm gonna butcher this because it's in a different part of it's in a different language. But anyway, you've been butcher. Listen, listen, right, yes. right, right, buddy, old pal. You butcher most of these at some point. Fuck We're off. We're used to it. Anyway, SCP-1537 is a language associated with a group identified as the Brothers of Akulhi. SCP-1537 demonstrates no connection to or similarities with any known terrestrial language. Details regarding the origin and purpose of TBOA are presently speculative. The first known incident traced to SCP-1537 occurred 
1982 and involved several prolific groups of interest, specifically the Global Occult Coalition. Further information, uh, alright, so SP 1537-1 is a phrase in 1537 which when spoken aloud produces an anomalous reaction in human beings that perceive it. Oh no, not another one of these. What? This is just like, oh, what's the worst that can happen? <laughs> it's CP. Oh no. But it's not a joke. Yeah. It's not a dash J. Just, let's just keep reading through it. Yeah. The there are two discrete presentations of this reaction. SCP 1537 A is a more common reaction. Individuals affected by SCP 1537 A will undergo the following progression of symptoms initial exposure, asymptomatic, one to two days. What? Asymptomatic. Asymptomatic. I have no idea what that is. You, wait, what? Dumbs. You've. You've ex you have existed during the age of corona, and you don't know what asymptomatic means? Yeah. It means you have no symptoms, but you still have it. Oh. Like, it's constantly talked about because, like, the reason corona was such it means you a, don't show a massive symptoms. spreader is because it was transmissible for so long while you were asymptomatic. <laughs> okay. It was constantly talked about it. Do you just not pay attention? <laughs> I don't watch the news. <laughs> I watch anime. <laughs> I don't I don't watch NBC. I watch One Piece. That's all the news I need. <laughs> You're a nice girl. We love you very much. <gasps> Anyway, kind of stupid. Yeah. Hush. One. To, <laughs> anyway, one to two days. Metallic taste and fever. Two days. One. Uh, two days to one week. Fatigue, shortness of breath, mild jaundice. One to two weeks. Internal bleeding, agenia. Two weeks. Death and subsequent transformation. Two weeks after exposure, the subject's body will rapidly disintegrate, producing a mass of pseudo-liquid material. What comprises this mass is inconclusive. Some human organic materials are present, however, the majority of its composition remains unidentified. These entities are either autonomous or sentient and are capable of both locomotion and altering their mass and shape. The variety of the shapes that SCP 1537 A entities can assume is virtually limitless, and, are, and they are capable of increasing their durability to approximately the strength of steel. The amorphous and metamorphic nature of SCP 1537 A rendered them resilient to most forms of physical damage. Immolation is thus far the only known method of termination. In combat, SCP-1537-A has been observed to produce various appendages and structures, most often tendrils in varying length. SCP-1537-A are exceptionally agile and can propel themselves at speeds reaching 81 km per hour. While mainly inert, SCP-1537-A may be provoked into, into violence by hostile action against it, or if ordered to by SCP 1537 B instances and members of TBOA. Right. See, yeah. Don't start. Ew. Yawning. The nice Disintegration. Nice. Shut up. SCP 1537 B is a rarer reaction and produces no physical symptoms or effects. Subjects affected by SCP 1537 B demonstrate progressively fluent awareness of SCP 1537 and are capable of reproducing language in both text and speaking. SCP 1537 1 is universally the first phrase that SCP 1537 B instances comprehend. SCP 1537 B do not display any observed psychological changes or abnormalities in contrast to their prior mental state and demonstrate a reasonable dis 
degree of surprise in response to their own comprehension of SCP-1537. However, SCP-1537-B appeared to be more vulnerable to suggestion and persuasion of TBOA. SCP-1537-B instances are capable of, of giving instructions to SCP-1537-A instances in both SCP-1537 and terrestrial languages. These instructions may encompass anything from single chores to attack orders. In addition, SCP-1537-A are both entirely loyal towards and extremely protective of SCP-1537-B and will use their bodies as shields for the latter. And that's it. It's 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 the what's the worst thing that possibly happen SCP, but a, to a lesser degree of of danger. <laughs> it, it's it's a, just yeah. It's that, but it causes mind control. Yeah. This is this is fucking weird. Ew! Disintegration. I don't. Nice. I don't know where this would go. <laughs> Well, I don't think it would be with the, with the other phrase. <laughs> well, no, obviously. <laughs> the other Probably phrase will literally end reality. <laughs> of, like, probably certain groups. Right. That makes sense. Uh, everyone else agree with that assessment? Yes. Yeah. Reed says it during the day. Right. It yeah. is but 45 minutes, or it's 45 minutes in an hour, an hour and 45 minutes before we begin killing zombies together. How does this information make you feel? Okay. Have just begun. All right, then, and ba back to your regularly st scheduled bullshit. <laughs> Aderna asks, when you gonna slept? Uh, I think I'll go earlier at, like, maybe 4 o'clock. 2 o'clock for me. Yeah. Do that'll never probably sleep. That's good because that'll probably give me at least another like like two hours before I need to get to sleep. Yeah. Alright. The next SCP. SCP 1547 is a phenomenon associated with various Southeast Asian islands, in particular Solowazi and Borneo. A SCP-1547 manifestation refers to the appearance of SCP-1547-A a few days after the conclusion of the last SCP-1547 event. SCP-1547-A will manifest into a group of people hereby refer referred to as targets. No correlation has been found between tar different targets and the largest reported instance affected is... 354 individuals, it is not known whether there exists a limit. SCP-1547-A is a vaguely humanoid entity, a variable appearance. Witness interviews and field reports describe the entity approximately 2 meters tall, covered in black fur other than a pair of vaguely canine eyes and no other dis discernible facial orifices or features. Uh, Bright, real quick. Yeah. Um, Aderna is asking that you spell out the locations in chat so we can get a better idea of what we're talking about. Uh, hold on, I'll type in. I am proud to announce that I am lightly incapacitating bikers with bullets. 
Incapacitating with bullets. Uh -huh. All right, I did exactly. it. Likely incapacitating them with bullets. Mm -hmm. All right, anyway, on back to the SCP. They're fine. Yeah. While SCP-1547-8 has been observed to walk using bipedal movement, it more notably has been found to possess displacement abilities and would use this ability to evade physical damage. If SCP-1547-8 is unable to avoid the physical damage without leaving the area that has manifested it, such as in the case of fire or extensive artillery assault, SCP-1547-A would demanifest. No attempt at tracking has been successful, and it has invaded all forms of physical contact. SCP-1547-A also seems to avoid sunlight, mainly manifesting at night, and would hide out of sight during the day. SCP-1547-A is capable of minor hallucinogenic Compulsion effect. However, the effect is weak enough that persons that score 70 or higher on the way scale or have undergone rager anti compulsion training are able to withstand its effect. I don't know what the way scale is. Is anyone else? The way scale? Yeah. yeah. I can look that up very quickly. Yeah, I was gonna say I'm I would confuse. Yeah, I was gonna say I would look it up, but I'm currently barreling down a highway in a truck of uh legally appropriated beer. Mm. Wait was a Union Army major who commanded an artillery battery in the first division corps army of the potomatic during the american civil war i don't think that's the way scale like it was saying like a score of 70 or higher on the way scale yeah Google. oh the wage scale it says w e y l W E Y L Y L. Right in the future, if you're having someone Google something, you should probably make it clear how that weird word is spelled. Fair. Yeah, well, that's definitely not how it sounds. I don't know how to say. It, I guessed. Another way to call it is whale invariance or whale symmetry. Okay. It is a conformal field theory, a quantum field theory that is invariant under the conformal transformations in two dimensions. There's an infin infinite dimensional Algebra of local conforming transformations and conform. You know what? Let's just say this is very big math nonsense. Okay, so I would not be on the scale. <laughs> my, my head hurts. Yeah. Anyway, on to the SCP. You know what? Maybe, maybe that was a different thing using that word. Whale scare. Scale factor. Never mind. Weight scale is just another way to talk about that theory. I'm backing away. Uh, I'm backing away. I am not a mathematician. I am not. I am not. No, 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 no. That's big math brain stuff, and I have no part in that. All right. Also, neat, Nerna. Ah. Uh, Anyway, on with the SCP. Subjects that are unable to withstand the compulsion effect of SCP-1547 reports a visual hallucination where they invariably see a tall wooden structure during a SCP-1547 manifestation. Subjects that are unable to withstand the hallucinations and compulsions now designated as SCP-1547 
I don't know what that. What be the math thing? I be math nerd. <laughs> uh, pitchfork. I'm assuming that's what it, I mean, that's what the symbol looks like. It looks like a fucking pitchfork. I know it's like a symbol in Romans or whatever, but I don't know what the pitchfork means. Did you say it's a Roman letter? I, I believe so. It looks like a pitchfork. Well, a pitchfork right, has a really look. short handle. Let me look that up. How did the Romans use their pitchforks? <laughs> we will find out. <laughs> that is not the Roman alphabet fucking Yahoo. They're like, do you mean the Latin alphabet? <laughs> no. That's why I use Google. You're using Once again, Google's guy. like, you mean the Latin alphabet? No, that's two different languages and two different alphabets. Wait. Is I'm fr I mean, I might be wrong, but isn't Latin just Roman? know where latin originated but it was not the roman language it it's a dead language well it's a dead it's a dead language but that like it was the main language spoke in the roman empire Thank like you. that that's that's why roman catholicism includes latin in their things i i, th I think the jury the one Jerry's looking for is the one, the Roman language that has a bunch of symbols. Like Omega, oh, no. Gamma, Beta. You fucker. What? I found it on Google, but the issue is when it's like trying to give the translation in English, it just leaves a bunch of blank boxes. Wait, Dirt, did you. Wait, the pitchfork? Oh, wait, I want to make sure that Adorno wasn't giving an example. Adorno, is the pitchfork looking Roman thing Theta? Because he just typed Theta for no, for no reason. Is that actually what it is? Theta? It is Psi. Psi? No, that'd be an example. Okay, so it was Jiri's Psi. So yes, it's... let me put it in the... Yeah. Yeah, that's it. That's the symbol I was looking at. The pitchfork looking thing. At this point, I have you absolutely... Of 700. At this point, I feel like we've completely lost the plot. I have no idea what's going on. What's that CBD? Don't worry, I'm reading... Re I'm reading all this danger right now. So, anyway. Along with the hallucinations, after the hallucination pulsions, uh, now I'm designated as 1547-Psi will attempt to construct and build the structure which is believed to serve as an altar. No two structures have been found to be the same, though repeated motives have been seen if SB-1547 manifestation is interrupted. At the completion of the structure, the majority of the SP-1547-Psi population typically would fall unconscious except in rare occasions. After any remaining SP-1547-Psi members that did not would usually assist SP-1547-A, who would usually use the structure for an unknown ritual and typically concludes in the death of SCP-1547-A or sometimes an scp 1547 Dash Psi instance. So it's just a creature that literally just torments people. How long is it? How far is its range? Did you um, see the math creature that torments people? Because I could believe that. 
Uh, SCP-1547-A is capable of a minor hallucinogenic compulsion effect. However, the effect is weak enough that persons that score 70 or higher on the, the, the scale thing or have undergone rager anti-compulsion training are able to withstand its effect. So it's not very strong. I would say certain groups and write, name out that mathematical thing because Adrian is curious. The scale stuff. So. Oh, the, the whale scale. What? Oh, J, J, uh, no, J, Jerry did it. <laughs> Jimmy J. Yes, you are apparently immune to this if you're good at math. All right, so I'm looking at the manifestation records, and so far, the largest radius has been able to do its minor hallucinogenic effects is 20 kilometers radius. Pretty small. Yeah, that's as, as far as it can go. Like... That wouldn't even take up, like, half, like, a quarter of a large city. <laughs> Apparently, Adurna says, well, Thank looks like I would be fine. Can't say whether you guys would be, though. Lol. Oh, oh no, I'd happened? be fucked. Why don't you try to figure out the whale scale and tell us about it? Uh, uh, <laughs> Jerry, <laughs> Jerry, you're, Jerry, Jerry, you're roboting. Not me. No, I'm hearing Jerry just fine. Oh god damn it, it's my end again. What the fuck? Are you okay? <laughs> uh, also, I am sorry for slightly uh daring Aderna to to math their way into explaining the wave scale right. to all of us. There. Yeah, because awesome. I just looked at that and its theories and just noped away from that. It's but okay. if yeah, this CP doesn't seem too dangerous. I feel like we'd understand the danger more if we understood the weight scale more. But we don't. I think Wait, okay. I want to say what it, what it, what the creature did, to, just, just this thing, like, what it made some people do. Alright. And in its first manifestation, it made... Eight men stood at equal distance from each other around a circle trench and urinated simultaneously, then fell unconscious. <laughs> you know this this is why we created the what the fuck here. <laughs> Dangerous, but it does that instead. It, it none of the manifestations have shown any death in like the per, like killing people. Could it just is it? It it just it just does random. It just does weird shit. So it just wants to fuck with people. I feel like that belongs in spoon tier. Actually, yeah. It just fucks. Like, literally, it could, but it chooses not to. It, it could, just, but it doesn't it, want to. It just messes with people who aren't good at math. <laughs> Everyone here but Aderna would be messed with. And wait, and is food. this a... food would not be messed with either? Food wait. and Aderna would both be immune. Wait a minute, is this SCP bright? No. Well, if the SCP was bright, then she would be immune too, but she's not. There we go. Alright. Oh. Mm -hmm. It looks like the next SCP we're about to get to is the sun. If I was ever affected by an SCP that might make me do stupid things, 
Would you save me with your math? How would I save you with my math? <laughs> they apparently only they only affect people who are bad at math. And wouldn't that mean I'd have to teach you not to be bad at math? But then you'd be stupid, so that would basically nullify it. <laughs> I love you! <laughs> I'm backing out of this. Alright, ready for the next SCP? I, I still want to see if Moderna is capable of explaining the weight scale. I'm tired of it. I'm tired of choking on my own throat. You good? I don't know. Don't die. Don't I, die, hatchet. Like when I was eating a one drenched chicken nuggets earlier, like a chunk of it got lost in my throat. Got it out. I'm fine. But now my throat is just super fucking irritated because of it. Oh, I wanted to say something. I found out something interesting. You know how I said I was allergic to sour cream? Yeah. Apparently, it was whatever was in the sour cream of the product I was buying. Because when I tried sour cream from a different company, I didn't get sick or anything. So it was whatever was in that fucking company's thing that was making me sick. Well, what was the company? It was Kroger. It was... It that, was... That, that tracks. So yeah, I was getting sick from their thing. When I went to choose someone else, I'm perfectly fine. <laughs> Kroger's, Kroger is transphobic. They tried to poison Bray. <laughs> So apparently, whatever is in there is what I'm oh, it's what I'm allergic to. But whatever I'm eating now, I'm not. I'm like I'm gotta, eating like a different type of sour cream. Yeah. You gotta look at the ingredients between yeah. the two and figure out what ingredients are the same and what are different. Right. That is quite interesting. All right. Uh, well, it contributed high, greatly to quantum mechanics and the theory of relativity. So his stuff is high-level shit. I see. <laughs> he 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 goes f he, he uses high-level shit for the stupidest of reasons. <laughs> Well, no, this, yeah, this SCP does high-level shit, for, uses high-level shit for the stupid and stupid reasons. Yeah. What the fuck? Make game people piss in a hole and they make them all unconscious. <laughs> it sounds like something you would do if you had, tele if you had like, telekinesis powers. Take I'm over... Yeah, the, actually, the thing is, um, I mean, telepathy, uh, that's actually yeah. the reason why I did not give that 035 power to my character. Because <laughs> that would make me way overpowered, so I made sure that was destroyed when I, when I took over the body. Like, that power was gone. <clears throat> That's also why I made sure some of my powers I can't control, like the glitching. Yeah. That way, my character's not overpowered. Well, that one's just objectively true. Fuck off. <laughs> you constantly cause glitches whether you want to or not. I know, I don't know why. <laughs> Do you feel better? It is joked that every pagan causes a uh, mechanical malfunctions of some sort. In oh, fact, yeah, the, uh... I often feel like every machine and every computer at work hates me. <laughs> anyway. All right. Yeah, what is it? The, uh, oh. what is it? The tech gremlins? Yeah. Notion theory. Are we ready to hear about the Sun SCP? For oh, uh, hopefully for a redemption from the last one. <laughs> oh, God. Do you remember the last one where they just threw D glass at the sun? Yeah. 
<laughs> Why is Chu a challenger? <laughs> Challengers approaches. Oh, because it is the Smash Brothers meme. Uh, hey, Pika, you get to hear an SCP. It's the sun. Literally nothing could be as bad as what I had to endure for several straight minutes. Hit me up. Several straight? What happened? Uh, there you go. Uh, it, 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 uh, it, short circuiting. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, are we all ready? I have had one customer once call quesadillas, quesarias or something. <laughs> quesarias! It sounded worse when they said it. It's just, it's been so long now, I barely remember it. Hey, yeah, give me some of those quesaria. <laughs> oh, no, quesarias. Uh, here's Sir Dillas. Quesadillas. Give me a quesadillas. There's quite a few customers that call them quesadillas, but this one said, here's Sir Dillas. Here's Sir Dillas. That, that, I've I that heard I've heard someone called a quesadilla uh, or whatever it's called uh, a quinceanera. <laughs> what? <laughs> the, food, the food is a coming of age party. This MF doesn't allow mentions of H E L L. Anyway, hello Chuwu. Adorna says hi. Uh, hi, hi, uh, hello, Adana. I've heard co workers reason that people say quesadillas instead of quesadillas because they don't know that Spanish uh, letter exists that looks like two lowercase L's. Mm -hmm. So they just act like it's two L's. Right. Quesadilla. Also, yeah. Jerry Pika, since you weren't here, there's something I want to tell you. Um, you know how I have Treat, Stream, and Throne, right? Uh, uh, yeah. Alright, Treat, Stream, if I do get one, it'll add 30 minutes. If I get Throne, I'll add an hour. Um, I appreciate you telling me. Unfortunately, Chew is not, and I know not in the new, new, uh, okay. I, I also notice I have more viewers than before, so I might as well just repeat myself. Uh, I, I have gotten you treat streams before, I believe, but I do not have the money to talk. That's fair. Life. I don't force anyone I, to pay me money. But no I one... do like throwing it at you. Unless. And I like you can link it in your, in your thing if you're going to tell your viewers about it. Like, if you're going to tell them about your throne, you might as well tell them about your treat stream. Throw it in there. I already did. <laughs> No, I saw the throne, I saw the Kofi, but I, you did not throw, throw it's, the screen. It's It's on my channel, like, it. it's one of the links you can click that's right next to my name. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Send help, my throat is rebelling against me. No. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, are, we, are we done being sidetracked? <laughs> Uh, no, the stun lock will go on forever. T O R T U R E bright with money. <laughs> wow, Aderna. I still want to know what the the whale the the, the whale scale is. They just they, it's like uh whale whale or whatever. It's contributed to the great quantum mechanics and ethereal relativity. You would likely have to have at least a math degree to go through it, to be honest, and would have to have learned about the theory of relativity and quantum theory. Oh. I'm not, no, no. <laughs> I ain't that dedicated. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, on to the next SCP, which is literally the sun. SCP-1548 is the destination of various anomalous solar phenomena, primarily occurring at the south pole of the sun. There are three types of known SCP-1548 events. SCP-1548-1, 6 equidistant ovular sunspots approximately 40,000 kilometers by 15,000 kilometers in size appear. 
The ends of the sunspots converge after 23 hours after accompanied by the formation of the solar prominence that typically takes the shape of thaumaturgic symbols, a coronal mass injection will then occur around the sunspots lasting 11 hours and the prominence dissipating after 5 hours. SCP-1548-2 begins similarly to SCP-1548-1. A solar prominence then forms around the site of the sunspots and breaks off from the sun, moving away from it and likely entering interstellar space. The event lasts for two hours. The dash three sunspots form thaumaturgical symbols which range in size. This can occur in conjunction with other events or separately, unlike the previous two phenomena. These sunspots do not commonly manifest in any single area. The first recorded SP-1548 event was on May 17, 1983, where an SCP-1548-3 event was observed showing thaumaturgic symbol 2201-V1. The event was classified as extra normal event 9008 until Similar occurrences were observed, leading to classification of SB-1548. It's just the sun making symbols. How do you feel? Am I even looking at this? Chu shall never know unless he turns on the stream muahaha. Are you okay? Oh no. Oh no. What? Apparently, the Foundation is speculating that these symbols are connected to the Chaos Insurgency. Oh. It went from being funny to not funny. Oh come on, and even join with the Global Occult, Global Occult Coalition? Come on! <laughs> Come on, both oh, of those and together. And shoot, was it was it really that bad? Oh wait, no, never mind, never mind. They they didn't join the Che Chaos. They joined our side, the, the Foundation. Hatchet, did you know who the debate was with and what it was about? Yeah, I, I had seen, uh, like at the start of our stream that Ocean was going to be debating. Uh, Vosh about anti theism. It, 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 uh, Christ on a stick. Um, it, and it, it, it was, it was bad. So, apparently, the only way you can be affected by it, by the sun thing, the sun symbols, is if you go near it, and they will, and the symbols will literally destroy. Anything that goes near it. Okay, don't go near the sun. They destroy kinetic and electromagnetic energy. I'll go to the camera again. But yeah, I... Ba basically, my, my current perceptions of what that, that, that quote-unquote conversation was is the fact that I was trying to oh for f uh oh, fucking gosh so i have schizophrenia is what they're saying yes yeah. wait did i un did i unmute am i being yes heard? you can yes. i can hear you uh -huh. also oh okay i i thought i okay i thought i forgot <laughs> Wait, Just... I'm with people. I'm with people. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? I was doing a schizophrenia joke. I was doing a schizophrenia joke. <laughs> right. Bad. 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 I don't care if I'm just a mad. Bad. Like, just a... Look. Just, just a mad... <laughs> Today was cleaning day. 
I had to clean both of the bathrooms. I'm I had to help with laundry. I'm very tired. I can tell. It's almost one AM. If it makes you feel any better, one of the most common things people do it after ordering fast food when it comes to complaints is they either order something and then when they get to the window, they remember their own order wrong and claim that they so ordered this instead of that, even after we double and triple check with them. And another common complaint besides misremembering their own orders is uh, after they get fresh hot fries, they expect the fries to stay fresh as they go through all the other things before they drive home. When they get home, they expect the fries to still be fresh out of the fryer hot. Otherwise, they blame us and take the fries back in an anger. I just don't understand how entropy works. All of our customers do that, but enough that makes me wonder how smart they are. What what are they putting in the drinking water over there? Um, it's it's not anything with the water. It's just for some reason Southern California has a lot of Karens, and I'm not even sure why. Excuse so they're putting, me. So they're I putting, need to. <laughs> I can't. Pika, if you are here, then you know exactly what I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, I've I've never interacted with a Karen that I can remember. I have. But, Pika, but, um, are you I, saying that you live in Southern California, but you've never ran into a Karen? I'm not confirming or denying any location. Any uh, any oh god, hang on. D take take two. I am not confirming nor denying any information on my location. She's well, on the west coast or the east coast, so no. I could be I, I, I could be on either, to be honest. Who knows? And yet it's one o'clock for you, which means you're running on eastern time zone. You don't know that. It's twelve fifty. Said that. I, I I could be lying. I lie a lot. Liar. So you're saying that you are lying every single time you have ever said the time for you. People are really good liars. And you're hey, well, not. Since I'm the only one Wait. here in Southern California, I will say once again, there are quite a few Karens here for some reason. It is especially confusing because there's next to no Karens where I uh, moved from, which was the Bay Area of California. All right. Before we get back to the SCP, I want to say this. Since Pika said they're always lying, does that mean that they're lying when they say that, that their voice is terrible? Oh. I never said I, never <laughs> said I always lie. I just said that people <laughs> lie. Does and the mean, best part about lying is that you will not know like when I am. Voice? Does that mm -hmm. mean you accept that people like your voice? Yeah, people mm -hmm. likes their voice. No. Confirmed. Mm, no. That sounds like a lie to me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, we can't tell because we won't say it's a lie or not. Yeah, I, I'm I gotta sorry, leave. Pika, but you knew this would happen. Uh, <laughs> I'm gotta... going to assume. That you accept that people think you have a wonderful voice. I, All right, I, I gotta leave some plausible deniability in there somewhere. Everyone type C in chat if Chu has a great voice. You guys, you, you are the <laughs> only people in chat right now other than <laughs> me. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so the consensus is C, C, it's okay, C, and then negative C from invalid user. Invalid vote. <laughs> that that one was uh that, that one was registered to a dead person. Uh they, that that, not... that vote will not be counted. <laughs> that's not a that's not a good democracy. Welcome to also, America. Also what the fuck also what the fuck is negative C? <laughs> 
It's the except negative. Anyway, so what do we do about the sun? I certain groups or honestly no, just scoot here. It's just the sun being weird. Fair. I will admit we already accepted that people die when they go near the sun. And I am not sure where this is going. Okay. I decided to see what the next SCP is. It's a J. And the picture that I see in front of me is just a wheelchair. Oh, dear God. <laughs> no. No, we don't need more ableism. We just heard a take from Vosh. <laughs> oh. But yeah, like, yeah. Chew, the, the only thing I knew from that, like, I, I was in the holds um chat channel about what was going on and all i could tell is one that apparently vosh was calling ocean a cuck a lot i was i was i can't believe it i i i was muted that entire time i was muted i can't believe this <laughs> yeah and then yeah and then uh, the other thing that I saw in that chat was at some point, apparently Vosh uh, basically said, I have no education or knowledge of religious matters. Mm -hmm. I, I, it, it showed. Um, uh, I'll just read what I put in chat. I said, also, Ocean offered to send Vosh sources on pluralism, since he obviously didn't know what the fuck he was talking about. So, who wants to know what the response from Vosh was? Oh. What, what was Vosh's response? Well, no. For once, no. Okay. He said, you can send them, but I'm still going to disagree with them. That's wow. just offering to send a definition, not to uh, believe in it. What? No, not definition. Uh, sources. And Ocean even tagged on. That these were written by by atheist um uh, advocates and uh um academics and whatnot, and he still doubled down and said he still would not change his mind even though they're coming from his side of the aisle. Well, once again, they could read it literally to understand it. They don't have to believe in it. That's what Ocean was asking, right? It, 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 yeah, it, it was just straight up information. It was just information, nothing else. You know, you know, like, you know how it's like a common thing. Like, I, I remember distinctly, you know, back when I watched a lot of Vosh, like, Vosh was the main guy that convinced me that capitalism is cringe and that socialism is cool. Like, I watched a lot of Vosh, and a part of why I watched Vosh is I liked watching him clown on Nazis. And see, a common thing I would notice is he would pull out academic sources, throw it at a Nazi, and the Nazi would go... Uh, something, I, something, yeah, JQ, so, so, something, something, yeah, something, therefore something, not valid. Yeah, something, something, uh, this isn't going to change my mind, something, something, this is invalid. What the <laughs> fuck? What the like fuck the, is the Nazis that he? Oh, but Pat, what the fuck is wrong with Bosch at this point? Uh, Who knows? Had, I feel like this has always been a thing. I just hadn't grown grown out of him yet. Phrasing. Honestly, to some extent, yeah. Looking back, like. There's been a lot of little. What's the best way? I, 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 I still think Bosch is good in one respect, and that is when he's bash bashing. But anytime he touches on a single topic outside of bash bashing, he just continually shoots himself in the foot and acts like he's smart. So. All right. I think I'm going to read this SP when you guys are done, then I'm going to eat it. I'll do a food break for a while. You're, you're, you're going to eat the SCP? Eat the SCP, yes. 
eat the joke. I don't well, think that's I said, could. Uh, if, if you want to start reading, go ahead. I need to go apply aloe to a brash. All right. I will be back. And I need water. All right. This SCP is SCP-1550-J. 1550 SCP-1550-J 1550 is a stylish metal wheelchair with electronics in both arm sets. It is motorized and can reach speeds up to 15 miles per hour. On a molecular and tangible level, it is completely normal. However, when a humanoid sits on the seat, six things will happen instantaneously. They will lose all hair on their head. The scalp is often described as soft and baby smooth. They will be paralyzed from the waist down as long as they remain in, S in 1550-J. They will develop telepathic abilities. A dramatic change in disposition will, order will occur. They will become calm and highly intelligent, although manipulativeness and slight ruthlessness have been noted as well. They will refer to, to themselves as professor and the first letter of their then the first letter of their last name. They will begin calling the other humanoid SCPs meta humans, mutants, or homo superior, and will believe that either the facility they reside in is a school for gifted youngsters. It was a school or the people inside used to be the students, but were kidnapped by the foundation. In this case, 1550. 50-J-1 will attempt to coordinate and escape. All other circumstances led them to training the mutants and trying to form them into superhero teams. If task forces exist that utilize certain humanoid SCPs, the professor will tend to assume leadership of those of these teams and make the SCPs more central. Is this just turning a person into the professor from the... Is it DC or Marvel? I forgot which one he's from. DC. The X-Men, I think, are... No, it's Marvel? Or I'll look it up. Yeah, it just, just turns you into the professor. <laughs> Marvel. The X-Men from Marvel... The X -Men professor X Marvel SCP. ...being, like, a giant... Uh, thing about bigotry. Bigotry and why it's bad by the X Men. That that does not really go well with SCPs, but you know SCPs aren't supposed to make much sense. Well, they are, but well, you know what I mean. Oh my gosh, yeah, it, literally the entire thing is just you being Professor from Marvel. You're not even a threat! I have returned from my hydration. Okay, Pika, do you know the, the Professor the, the, from Marvel, from X-Men? Uh, yes. This is what the wheelchair does to you, it makes you that person. Pog. But you also I, become I... crippled. Do you also get telekinetic powers like him? Yes, you get everything he has. The ability to to manipulate stuff with my mind? Hell yeah, I want it. Gimme. Wait, can, can I can I leave whenever I want? Or... I mean, you'll you'll continue thinking, professor. You have to be taken off to make you think you're no longer a professor. No, like, if I get out, do I get to keep the powers? 
No. And then get them back when I sit back down. You only get to have them when you sit back down again. You do not keep them with you. Well, then, yeah, give me that chair. And then I can use my powers for good, I promise, when I'm in the chair. Liar. You don't I know my you. intentions. <laughs> I would never do anything bad to anyone for any reason. We totally believe you. Uh-huh. Yay. That was sarcasm. Adana, I would never lie to anyone. And I never have. You've lied to plenty lying. of people. We all have at some point. Okay, so, uh, Cheery, apparently they put Abel in that chair. What? And he Why? actually started collecting a bunch of SCPs, but here's the most fucked up part. I want to read this. Alright, we have quite the monthly crew here, but we all love each other like family. Scientist 231. Oh, you mean Marvel Woman? What's her power, power, mister? Well, I can data expunge, data expunge, data expunge. <laughs> Scientist 2, mouth wide open, shocked expression on his face. 231. I also like shopping. <laughs> are, are you okay, Jerry? But also not wonder. Oh yeah. Uh, hey, Pika, SCP-231 is the wives of the Scarlet King. And um, in order to keep the wife from birthing a child, you have to do so many acts that can never be said on Twitch to the person's body. I'm not sure how to respond to that because I don't know what those actions are. You need I... to be a doctor that did not take a certain oath. I don't know if I... Hippocratic oath. You can't you couldn't have been able to take the Hippocratic oath because you have to be able to hurt people. I honestly don't understand how doctors can take that oath and then act on it. I'm sorry. I just couldn't do it. How okay. the fuck did this chair get here? Can you tell that I'm sleepy? Okay, Pika, I sent showing. you I sent you it. I sent you to it. What they do. Procedure one ten Montauk. What they do. Mm-hmm. Ah. The, the, yeah, you I see it. I, I see. <laughs> do you regret Why knowing? Do you do that? Why? What kind of woman are you? I, I, I must I must say <laughs> cringe <laughs> and not based. I, I, you do that, Bright? Bright? I, I had to. They had to know what it was. Y'all, Aderna, Aderna bonked me. Aderna <laughs> bonked. <laughs> anyway, I'm going to put this in spoot tier or something like that. Because I don't think this is going to be worth being dangerous. <laughs> I mean, yeah, it's the opposite of dangerous after all. If it can have Abel act like that, then it could probably make every anyone harmless. Oh wait, we deserve to bonk Pika? Okay, hold on. Where is it? Where is it? Ah, there it is. <laughs> SCP-1573 is the town of Tellerana. Estimated to be approximately 100 kilometers away from Delicious, Mexico.
SCP-1573 possesses minor anti-memetic properties that can seal both the exact location of the town and identifies I, oh wait, not identifies, and identities of people living within it. Regardless of this, subjects and Foundation personnel have still been able to access the region, although different methods have been used on a case-by-case -case basis. These methods include subjects Certainly, understanding the location of SCP-1573, the way, and instantaneous translocation to the town. SCP-1573 also contains spatial altering phenomena, as not foreseeable increase in the town's size or area of effect has been detected despite an increasing population. Several miles of cable and electrical wire extend below the surface of SCP-1573, originating from the town square. These wires terminate without any, any connections and into other unpowered components. The purposes of these remains unknown. Within the center of SCP-1573 is an 8 meter tall statue primarily composed of steel, silica glass, and plastic sheeting. It acts as a trigger for SCP-1573's secondary anomalous attributes, which allows SCP-1573-1 to manifest. To activate this trigger, subjects must attend prayer in the vicinity of the statue, often referred to as a holy site within the town. Prayers are conducted in mass where Residents will either praise or worship the statue for upwards of 30 minutes, typically beginning at 8.30 a.m. Once the session concludes, residents will resume their daily schedules, observations of subjects participating and attending these congressions do not indicate that they have been coerced or into prayer by any anomalous influences. SCP-1573-1 is the collective designation for parasitic sentient humanoid cephalopods primarily composed of thin interweaving tubes of metal, plastic, and copper. They will manifest once human subjects who have settled into town and have to do. That's still, I have a story so much. Anyway. And attended prayer at least once attempted to conceive a child with SCP-1573. During ordinary childbirth, SCP-1573-1 will take, take the place of the infected subject's offspring via prenatal and erto consumption. Upon witnessing the anomaly, subjects will perceive SP-1573-1 as local children. They will then nurture and care for SP-1573-1 as it leeches sus sustenance from them, until, often until adulthood or in some cases they, until they become aware of the anomaly. SCP-1573 retrieves its energy via physical attachment to its host with any of its eight tentacles. Tentacles are equipped with sharpened metal of similar composition to the rest of its body, which it uses to pierce the victim's skin and open orifices to extract the fluids. SCP-1573-1 is verbally aggressive towards non-native subjects of SCP-1573 with previous reports claiming that entities will threaten to inflict severe bodily harm unless the individuals settle in the town and have children. Additional statements including general emotional harassment have also been reported. No claims of physical violence have yet been pr provided. Once SCP-1571-1 reaches approximately 18 years of age, they will leave SCP-1573 and migrate elsewhere. Upon leaving SCP-1573-1, instance will resemble a non-anomalous human with behavior similar to a typical 
18 year old potentially caused by an extended effect of SCP-1073 after migrating to another locale SCP-1573-1 will find and allow humans to travel alongside them back to SCP-1573 analysis of subjects is intercepted by foundation personnel from SCP-1573-1 indicates that despite claiming that they wished to travel to SCP-1573, such as were unable to recall any motives or reasons for their sudden or interest. Continued observations indicate that affected subjects have been influenced by outside phenomena, although the capacity of what said influences are currently elude the Foundation. There you go, that's the SCP. I'm eating cheese. What? I'm eating cheese. Okay. I hate cheese. It's. What'd you say, Chew? I hate cheese. It's. How dare you? How dare you? I dare because it is. It is my personal truth. That is my ninja way. <laughs> Yeah, that's pretty much my brain right now, Bray. It is <laughs> yawning perpetually, and you should you can probably tell. Probably okay, only so, deal with, uh, oh, what was that, Hashit? For this SCP, I would say um, uh, certain groups. Because right. I don't see it causing an extraordinary amount of harm. Yeah, fair. Like, it's just the 18-year-olds going out and luring people into the into the cephalopod parasite hole. But, like, that's still not going to cause, like, an extremely large amount of people. Yeah. Mark. Yeah, I agree. Anyone else in disagreement? I'm staring off into space. I did nothing in chat. I see that shit. <laughs> I can't see anything. Whoa, whoa. I did a poll. Oh. Current poll. Which shark is the bestest of boys? White shark, hammerhead shark, basking shark, whale shark, or thresher shark? <sighs> Sleepy. The sleepy shark. Damn, well, shark's getting a lot of votes. Yeah. Well, that was a weird sudden. Looks like no one's in that... disagreement, so we'll put that there for now. Yeah, group. I don't. I I assume that by there being no sounds of disagreement. We're in agreement. All right. Why then. does my body keep twitching? That is concerning. It's just something that happens every once in a while. It's nothing serious. So how dare you people besmirch, besmirch the good name of Thresher Shark? Because whale sharks exist. Well, sharks are not the bestest of boys when compared to the Means now I'll be setting up my game.